Ja się studiuję. Czas i. troublesome sides and that prediction has certainly come through. We look at the ladder and we see just where Port Adelaide is. Their percentage has not been above 100 all year. They're nearly there. Win tonight. They can make the 8. That's for certain. The Bombers have got to win 6 straight to play in the finals. The 1997 AFL Premiership season proudly brought to you by Foster's Light Ice for extreme refreshments. Telstra, making life easier. Qantas, the spirit of Australia. And McDonald's, the official restaurant of the AFL. And Tim, no team has won six in a row this year. The best is five. They've got some changes. Harvey, Danaher, Fraser, Fletcher are in. Mm. One late one. Mercedes out, foot injury. That's right. We saw just a moment ago Shea Cockatoo Collins on screen. He's replaced Joe Mercedes. As yet, it hasn't been confirmed exactly what's wrong with his foot. But a couple of experienced players into the lineup Mark Harvey and Chris Danaher, and also Dustin Fletcher, and they certainly missed him across half back last week. You'd remember this bloke pretty well in the Bomber oh. Jumper. Played in a premiership with him in 93 when he won his Brown. 
middle. Now the captain of Port Adelaide. They're going to miss Lyle. He's the late mm. withdrawal with a thigh injury, replaced by Peter Burgoyne. Well, Burgoyne's a young player, very good young player, and he'll be an excellent player down the track, but he certainly won't get the same number of possessions that Lyle would have had had he been in the side. That halfback line of Wanganin, Bond and Euskis, all those players that cross, play across halfback, very, very good players. Let's go down to the ground because uh, Mark Doran's down there with uh, an all-time favourite, James Hurd. Thanks, Bruce. And James, you've been in the rooms. There's been a lot of injury problems with the Bombers and you've lost another one tonight, Joe Mercedes. What's the atmosphere like in there? Yeah, Joe Mercedes out and Shake Ocker to Collins is, is in the side. Look, the atmosphere is very good. Uh, I think you know, the guys are talking about um, still making the finals. Obviously, you've got to be positive in that aspect and be a hard row, but that's what we're talking about. And, and sort of just playing well for you know, two club sort of champions in Mark Harvey and Chris Danaher, probably in the last six games, you know, the last year. And really, I think the players are really trying to play the year out for those two and they've been great club cap great club captains I suppose in their own right and really been, been team men and uh, I think if they can play well for those two players it'll be fantastic. You just about have to win the whole six don't you? Yeah look it's a very hard task but really we've had look the last four games have been very good for us except probably an hour against Carlton we had a very very bad hour and uh, played well against the Swans and Melbourne and Richmond and, and look you know we've played some good football but had a dis disappointing game last week. Okay you had trouble with Port in round two so hopefully a bit better tonight. Hope so yeah. Thanks James Back to you, Bruce. Thanks, Mark. You're a very special tie there, uh, James. James Heard with Mark Doran. A break back with the opening bounce after this. If the house is a rocket. to the Melbourne Cricket Ground Friday Night Football. Mark Doran and Matthew Campbell all the way from Adelaide on the boundary line. Welcome once again, Mark. Thanks, Bruce. And uh, we've just come from the Bombers' rooms. We've just had a talk to James Heard. The Bombers are talking about running football and using the ball aggressively. Matty, uh, the Port Power? 
Well, they realise that this is the final for them, Bruce, and this is one they have to win. They worked it out at the start of the, the year. They need to win this game. They need to win 12 games. So nothing pretty, I don't think, Mark, from Porter would just be hard at the ball, hard at the play. Their leg speed to get to the contest, their leg speed to tackle is what they concentrate on. And it'll be same again tonight. They made it the start of the year after round two. Porter lost their first two games, losing this one to the Bombers. They were 20 to 1 to make the eight. And now the Bombers are 20 to 1 to make the eight. It's an amazing change. Did you have a couple of dollars on that? No, I didn't. I wish I did, actually. I still think they will make the eight, and I still would like to have your money if you want to back Essendon. I'll back the Bombers. I think he's going for Porter. So an even money game, isn't it? Here's the toss. Gary O'Donnell and uh, Gavin Wanganeen, they know each other pretty well. In fact, just before that, Gavin won it and kicked to the right. Tim Watson is an old teammate. Gary gave him a bit of a friendly handshake, didn't he? He gave him one of those EJ specials, Bruce. When you grab hold of the hand, you twist the fingers and you pull the bloke towards you. And Gavin gave a bit of a smile too. Old mates from Essendon. Sandy Roberts, welcome once again to Friday Night Football. Thank you, Bruce. An excellent night for this very important game for both sides. Do or die for the Bombers. Do or die for Port Power. And I'm looking forward to it. I saw Port last week kick 10 straight and they were dynamic. There is that handshake. <laughs> Gavin uh, and Gary would have played uh, in so many big games on this ground together. But for Port Power, it's only their second one, their first one under lights. Boy, haven't they come a long journey since Collingwood in round one. Friday night football commences a fantastic weekend. The Bledisloe Cup here tomorrow night on this very ground. Great matches all around Australia on the Seven Network. Primus easily over O'Connor. Danaher quick to get into the thick of it. Missed by Pryor. Gets a second go. Handball well. Primus got it high and we'll get a free kick. Will it be 50? Going back to Primus has been really good this year. He was promising last year at Fitzroy. When Laid put the challenge to him early in the year, he has responded and has got back the number one ruck situation. Handball on. Gets to Mead who has been one of the shining lights in a, a team full of them. Cummings almost, he like Wanganeen, would love to succeed, not only for Port tonight, but against the Bombers, who he played a fair bit of footy with, and has been outstanding at Port Power this year. Yes, he had 40 games with the, the Bombers, kicked the 83 goals, before he kicked going the way of Essendon, in the last line of defence to be taken by Peter Kranzberg. So at halfback comes wide towards the wing. A cool night in Melbourne towards Lucas. The boy from Camperdown takes a strong mark in front of the eyes. Heads in towards the wing area once again. Michael Pryor hasn't missed a game. He gets it away now towards Sean Melman, another one who's played the lot. In towards full forward, Paxman forced to defend, and he does that nicely. Down towards Fabian Francis, and Francis is away, back towards the wing. It's OK, Cummings has come a long way out. Bomber fans remembering Scotty Cummings. Kicks towards half forward, a bit of pushing, and the big man has given it away. Darrell Paul, playing only his eighth game for the season. So Harvey has it on centre wing. Again, he finds Lucas. He's got a bit of space. Kicks to half forward. Neat. Ola Renshaw. Again short. Finds his target. So the Bombers able to get to clear on a couple of occasions there. And Carousella, who has kicked 17 goals this season, has been able to get to, away from the opposition and take the mark about 40 metres out. I think confusing Port on that occasion by pushing so many players back into defence. Port a little unsure as to who they're picking up on the way back. We've played a few rookies, the Bombers, this year. This is the one who survived so far in this match. Normally a good kick. He's put it straight through the middle. Has he? Yes. It just made it, but it got home. He's been good for three goals on more than one occasion this year. And he started well tonight. Essendon chipping the ball well on this occasion. Mark Harvey, the veteran, getting to Lucas. Lucas' second possession in early part of this game. He's been picked up by Huskis. And I think what he'll probably try and do is get Huskis up the ground. Huskis does like to hang back across half back and just feed off errant bulls down that part of the ground. And they'll really try and keep him honest tonight. Back in the middle with Andrew Coates. One of the men in white in charge of proceedings tonight, being joined by Stuart Wen and Gavin Della. Fry 
Thomas again doing the ruck work, but it's O'Connor, his opponent, who takes it out, charges down to half forward once again. Pressure on this Port Power defence. They were excellent last week, led by Huskus and Paxman. And here is Adam Huskus. He's been in excellent form. Back towards Poole on centre wing. Almost took the mark. Play on is the call. Wilson has been a sensational player for Port. He's taken high, and this young star will have the free kick. Away he scoots. Long and low, into half four. The kick was a beauty, and he finds Scotty Cummings. That was an excellent kick, wasn't it? Cummings gave the dummy lead, went out to his right, got back behind Sean Wellman, and Wilson picked that up, looked up early, and that trusty left foot of his hitting Scotty Cummings on the chest with a beautiful drop punt pass. We see it here. Wilson, Cummings went the other way first, just gaining a couple of yards on Sean Wellman. This is to bring up his half century for the season. 49 goals, 30 for Cummings. 40 metres out, not a good kick. Floated it onto the boot and pulled it away to the left for behind. Yes, it was a nervous kick as we see John Carl and the Port Brains Trust looking on. Wellman gets it short from McCurry. Number of these four players in their first match at the MCG didn't play against Collingwood. There's a free kick down the ground against her Cummings. So Fletcher bangs it to half forward. He's got Lloyd on his own. Good take. Not paid. Yes, it is. Free kick against Bond. Lloyd a long way from home. He too is closing in on the 50 goals. Good kick. 60 metre kick to set a half forward. O'Connor front spot. Daniels at the back. Ripped away from uh, Huskus. Brewer had a fresh air shot. Taken by Primus. Port Power got numbers. Bond has had a good season. Kicks it out wide. Trying hard there to find James. And with him is Pryor. And it's going to be a boundary throw in. Cockatoo Collins who came in from the CG tonight. So a reprieve for him. He was one of four players missing. Wallace Jukovic. And some of all the others. Currently 12, expected to get down to 10 tonight. Fletcher doing the ruck work from behind. Wanganeen almost taken in a headlock by Denham. Wanganeen playing in the midfield, probably to cover the loss of Lyle tonight. Crunch time for the Bombers who've had such a marvellous reign since 1979. Wanganeen towards centre wing, towards Nathan Eagleton, couldn't take it. Chance now for Harvey to pick up the hand pass, and he does to Kranzberg. The Bombers come up towards half forward. The floating kick drops short, though, onto the chest of Donald Dickey. Has he got the bolt of lightning in his hair this week? We'll have to see. An opportunity now for Mead. Runs wide on the wing, controls it well, sneaks around O'Donnell, looks in towards half forward, but the floating punt is slightly astray and it's going to give Pryor the chance to combine with Simons to get Essendon out of trouble. Out to the outer side, Wanganeen and Fletcher. Low to the ground is Gavin Wanganeen and his pass is good. The power very keen for their first goal. There's the lead of Cummings, now he drops back. James decides to go along. In towards full forward. And off the ground, first one for the night, and that could be number 50. Scotty Cummings, at his second shot for goal, has booted the Port Adelaide score, and they lead by one point. Here's Cummings. Be happy to get a goal on the board early in this game against his old club, Essendon. Certainly be under pressure from his teammates out there. We see Huskus getting down into the forward line. That's just clever play by Cummings. Get the ball on his boot quickly. He'll be a handful for Scott Sean Wilmer tonight. Ryan O'Connor was spoken to by the umpire a moment ago. Franco, he and uh, Donald Dickey had a fair uh, wrestle behind play and the emergency umpire came out. So I'm not sure if there's been a report. Primus, Brewer, Denham, Port Lead. Gee, they're quick on the tackle. Boundary throwing. Uh, Bruce, Mark Harvey appears to be going on the ball after centre bounce knocks. O'Connor's taking the knocks and then he's going down to the forward line. 
as we go down to Matty Campbell on the boundary line. Thanks, Tim. Unlucky break for Port Power. Fabian Francis off the ground with a hamstring injury. The ice is straight onto it. Stephen Carter replaced him. Not good because Fabian's been in good form on the halfback flank. I don't think we'll see him again tonight. Paul to Dickey in towards half forward. But again, cut off by Michael Pryor. Might have taken a stat away from Jared Cotton a few moments ago. So apologies to Jared as that ball again goes over the line. And I don't think Port have quite worked out yet, Sandy, that Mark Harvey is in fact the ruckman. He's playing, obviously, as a player, probably behind the ball across half-back and in around the centre. At the back, Danaher. Brewer. Cut off by Simons. Running out of space. Takes his man on. Does it well with a bit of aggression. Floats the ball badly. It's a poor kick. So, uh, Heaver to Huskus through the centre. Port looking pretty good here. Right to full forward. Cummings there getting across Hardwick. Wanganeen looks for free kick, gets it. He's outstanding at doing it. As soon as he feels a tackle coming, he'll just roll down with it. <laughs> There's only one player better, or he's equal in the competition, and he's playing up the other end of the ground. Deep Buick. Thank you very much. They're gems, aren't they? Look at this, Mark McCurry just believing that he had to keep hold of Wanganing, knowing how explosive he is in that situation. Now the skipper lines up for a goal. Well, this is some irony, isn't it? If Cummings and Wanganing kick the first two against the Bombers. It's got it, I thought, has he? Snuck it in. So Cummings and Wanganing, the ex Don's ex Bombers, score against their old team. And Porter going well. There's a contrast of styles here as we see. He to get the ball across to Hughes. Long kick. And the Port players, players congregating at the fall of the ball. Essendon not really being able to get enough of a hand onto that punch. Trying to punch the ball wide. Wanganin reading the ball well. Seven points the margin. Favouring Port Power. Good start to this game. It's going to be a scrap. Franco through, but couldn't take it. That was a throw. Not overly subtle, but it's very difficult. When one hand is being held. Franco in towards half forward. Clean bowls the lot. Who's at the back to tidy up? Damien Hardwick goes wide in towards the back pocket region and over the line with Michael Pryor. Bombers have just four players now who've played every game this season. In stark contrast to Port, they have 10. But their injury problems have been well documented. Franzberg and Poole. Simons in over the top, Wanganin, Poole again. Mark McCurry comes in also. The man who won the brown loves a 20-year-old at the bottom of the pack. Big chance here for Port if they can score again. Hardwick takes them on. Jared Cotton locks him up. They're hard at the ball side, Port, aren't they? They really make a contest wherever they can. Essendon are going to have to beat their best tonight to beat them. Ball wins it. Pushes it towards goal. Off the boot of Danaher. Danger here. Cummings! From behind. It was interesting last week, I thought the winning move by Carlton was getting McKay back onto McCurry across half back and actually tagging him even though he was a forward. And McCurry's one player Essendon really need across half back to set up play. Here he goes again. Hardwick gives it to him and McCurry chips it away to half back to Carousella. He's coming back, I think, to Hardwick. I'm sure Port would have noticed last week exactly how Carlton did counter McCurry. But McCurry picking up Gavin Wanganeen at the moment. It's a hard look now for the back pocket. Kicks are pretty low to half back. Not a good kick and again cut off by Bond. Signs are not good for the Bombers early. You look around the ground and Port seem to have their match. I know we've only been playing 10 minutes. Bond's floated to the pocket. Wellman gets back. Tackle on him okay. Denham with a chance now. 
gets it to Lorenzo, he's a left footer, comes away, he'll straighten his body, two bounces, takes his man on, three, he's gone now, holding the footy, well, what went through his mind? Port go forward, Frank goes, kick oh, two, oh, like a raffler, Cotton's got it, at set a half forward. It's a critical turnover, isn't it? Well, he was... He didn't have a lot to kick to, Bruce, looking down the ground. There was a wall of Port players built up across half-back. But really, not a lot of talking here. And you really do rely upon those players behind you to be your eyes in that situation. Now, Cotton's on a bad kick. It's 50 metres out. And that looks good off the boot. He's got it. It's a pretty good start, this. After the Bombers got the first, it's been all the power. It's 3 2 Port, one goal Essendon. Well, it's an excellent start by Port. In fact, it was a similar start they got over in Football Park, but Essendon were able to peg them back on that occasion. But they had a number of players in that particular team that aren't playing tonight, and they're going to have to match. Good tackle there, but nobody talking, nobody letting Oren Shaw know that there was pressure coming from behind. Well, they'll be rocking in South Australia at the moment with Port Power looking the goods and they'll be rocking at Billy Bell's Hotel because that's where Port have their base in Victoria. They go forward once again. This time it's Daniels down towards the right half forward flank, but an excellent diving mark is taken by Hardwick. And Prime is doing very well for centre bounce. Hit outs at the moment. O'Connor giving away a lot of height though. Hardwick looks towards Lucas and Donald Dickey just floats in front and is going to be paid the mark. The bolt of lightning appears to have grown out of his hair. He kicks into half forward. Man in front is going to be paid. And finally disentangling himself from Daryl Paul as Peter Cransberg. Ooh, really should have been able to bring that ball to ground on that occasion. In the veteran class now, he turns 30 next week, Kranzberg, as he goes to another veteran, Mark Harvey. Oh, set up Hardwick, who was used as a stepladder, and Brent Heaver is a long way out, but he'll charge them forward. The pass is a beauty, the lead was good, and Port Adelaide, ominous, ominous signs here as far as Essendon are concerned. Well, that was really very poor play by the Essen defence then because they left a hole right in front of Cummings. They had four players who had pushed back into their defence, but they just didn't push back far enough. There was a massive hole there, and Cummings just waltzed into it. It was almost an invitation. It was, it was just a terrible bit of defensive work. So Cummings for his second, and this for the power to open up a very, very handy lead. It's 3-2 to a goal at the moment. His first shot was not good, it was tentative. His second was okay. And his third is okay as well. The power surges on. 4-2 plays one straight. Well, once again, it was a turnover, a poor kick by Harvey. Bill directing the kick to Hardwick in the centre of the ground and then Heaver really, and as I said a moment ago there's some defence, they got back in numbers but they just didn't guard the space in front of Scotty Cummings and Heaver took plenty of time, there's obviously plenty of time to get the ball or get the players back to cover that hole and Cummings really, at the end of the day just having to convert a very simple kick let's just see if Essendon can get the ball out of the centre, bounce this time it's a Whitman's light ship high over the Melbourne cricket ground tonight so the Bombers in a bit of disarray here. They're quite confused coming out of the fence. 4-2 to a goal. Port taking advantage of it, playing some good football. Built it away beautifully by Bond to Paul to Heaver. Head bounce is a bit stiff. McCurry to get back. He's certainly the class act at Essendon at the moment with no herd. Mercedes, Olorenshaw, good tackle on him by Wanganeen. Bounce. Just finding it extremely hard at the moment, is to come out of half back and find somebody. Well, they're just kicking to too, too many 50 50 contests. Saw Francis Burgoyne in late a moment ago. Francis unlikely to come back and say he's 100 to 1 with a hamstring. There's Lucas, somebody's got to do something to half forward. Carter had a bit of it. Buick with a chance. Buick still going. He'll look for a free kick. He laid back, it didn't come. Over the top, O'Connor, no free kick. A boot went in hard there. Taken by Bond. He fishes for it a bit, Bond. Had it for a while, but a good handball at the end. Hustis away. The 
this point. Defence has been very good for most of the year. Ola Renshaw front spot. Over the top of him was Dickey. Boundary throwing. Wanganeem picks himself up. They're very good at sitting on a lead too, Tim Port. They've had leads all year and they've been able to sit on them. Yes, they've been a very good second half side too, Bruce. They've got a terrific uh, sweeping defence that can hold opposition down and that's the key to them. Wanganeen to Heaver. Heaver's centering kick. Held up for a moment was Danaher. Wilson, good kick round the body. Gives it a chance. It may bounce back. Just misses. Right option though. Gave it a hope on the left. And poured a 4-3 to a goal. The bombers are flat. There is no doubt about that. John Cahill. The last time he coached against Kevin Sheedy in Melbourne. Essendon won by 133 points in a preliminary final at Waverley Park. They went on to win the first of two flags in 1984. It's a long time ago, I know, but uh, hasn't Cale had a fantastic career as a coach? In towards the middle. And a big mark by one of the form players for the side in Adam Huskus. Into half forward once again. At the back, who's there? No, there's going to be a free kick and it's going to be paid to Essendon. Brandsburg at half back. Well, this bomber defence is finding all about Port Power very early on in this game. I guess the other common denominator between these two sides is Mark Williams, who uh, spent a year with uh, That's right. Sheeds at Windy Hill. Know a lot about them too, Sam. To centre wing. A chance now for Lloyd, recovered a little quicker than Mead in towards half forward on the mark taken by Buick. Wants to go on with it. And that's better. Fletcher will have a shot, 25 out. Well, they've pushed Lloyd up the ground. He's gone to centre half forward. And Dustin Fletcher's gone back to full forward now. And good use of the ball then by Darren Buick. He's a very good finisher. Fletcher on a 45 degree angle. Desperate for the Bombers, a second goal, and up goes the red and black. That's good finishing by Essen. They've only had the ball into their 50 metre arc on four occasions, and they've been able to kick two goals. So they'll be happy with their conversion at this early stage. Lloyd just getting on the end. Good vision too to spot Buick on his own. And then Buick a wonderful kick into space in front of Fletcher. Important goal to Fletcher. Well set up. Lloyd to Buick to Fletcher. To the Bombers with a couple now. Port with four. Crowds built up since the opening bounce. A sea of black and... Uh, Red flags after that goal, and the Bombers are going to need their crowd here to get them home. Port just does not seem intimidated when they travel. I know they've only won one game in Victoria, but they don't get beaten by a whole lot if you take the Collingwood game away. They stuck with North Melbourne. They did very well against West Coast in Perth. They gave the Western Bulldogs a mighty start and beat them at Optus. So they'll keep coming. O'Connor's free kick in the centre. Big fella, good kick, right to full forward, Lloyd's the target, oh gee, good effort against three, Buick to snap it up, normally kicks them, he has missed. A behind. He's giving them a bit of spark though. There's no doubt about that, Essendon lining up on that occasion with four players across half forward, Lloyd one out at full forward against Paxman, and then players just feeding off the crumb. 14 points the margin as Huskus floats a punt kick towards the half-back flank. It's OK, they've got possession as it's pushed up towards centre wing by Steve Carter. Eagledon's feeling the heat. And they may turn it over here because Lucas is waiting on centre wing and he pumps it now down towards half forward once again. Almost the mark, not paid, but play on O'Connor. And he does towards McCurry in towards full forward, but Bond chops it off. He steadies at half-back. Comes wide, Fletcher drops back. Frank, who's got to beat a couple, he can't do it. Lucas takes the hand pass from McCary, charges inside 50 once again, and taking the mark. But a long way out is Blake Carousella, and a very, very tight angle. Going 
for distance and he pulls that to the left. Another behind goes on the board for the Bombers, down to the boundary line, Matt Campbell. Yeah, Sandy, Matthew Primus is really going to be the key from down at ground level. He gave away that free kick to O'Connor and then ran the length of the ground to spoil just in the goal, goal square. So he really is the best big man on the ground and Essendon are going to have to do something if they want to stop him. Paxman will bring it back into play. towards his big man, although it was Donald Dickey who flew. Here's Ben Dolan, 48 metres from home, again to the left. So a late charge in this quarter by Essendon to get back into this first term. Just in the last couple of minutes they've started to get their hands on the ball again, haven't they? Yep. Paxman again. given the word by the umpire and goes Fletcher a flyer from the side man in front it's going to be Prince big fellow being pushed out on that occasion he's been in very good form Tim yes and this one really don't have a recognised big man out on the ground tonight here's Dickey in towards Paul and Co at half forward waiting down an opportunity now the hand pass is going to be okay towards James and Port Adelaide have the answers here at the MCG. That's a quick reply, isn't it? Just racing the ball down the length of the ground. Good bit of play, just kicking to the spot. And Poole once again, just contesting, not getting his hands on the ball, but just making the other players honest around him. And a good handball and good finishing on that occasion. Brewer, a clever player. Two, three to five, three, so Port recover in a hurry. It's a real blow to the Bombers late in the term. Daryl Paul's handle it was meant for Wanganeen. Olerinshaw cut it off. McCurry kick by uh, Denham was dueled into McCurry. Denham's kicked the set of half forward. Front spot, Lucas. Mead is there over the footy, then pushes out cleverly. Brewer on the bottom, three Bombers on top of him, and also getting involved, Primus, and a bounce about to 60 metres from Essendon's goal. As you, sorry, Bruce, interesting to see Michael Wilson now picking up Mark McCurry. Obviously, Port, a little bit concerned about McCurry getting too much of the ball. O'Connor works to the front. Bond, clever, then ran out of room and held it up okay. Huskis' is high ball to half back. Missed there by Doolan. Gets a second chance, though. Comes back. Blumfield. Back to Lucas. Lucas centering kick. Saw Fletcher. Good ball. Well played. Fletcher's a thumping kick. He's at 52 metres. Not beyond him, this. It's going to go short to centre half forward. Lloyd the target. Three to beat. Pryor gets there quickly. Port gets to Pryor. It's going to be a ball up. It's interesting, though, isn't it? On that occasion, Lloyd went for the ball. There were three Port players against him. Every time he does go at the ball, he does draw two or three players, and that just creates a situation where Essendon should outnumber the opposition at the fall of the ball. A big one and a half minutes left in this quarter now, especially for Essendon. A chance for Buick. Has it, loses it, gets it again and loses it. Prior there to assist. Gets the hand pass out wide. It comes back to Fletcher. Kick is partly smothered. Porter continuing to harass. Olorenshaw towards Harvey. He tumbles a wobbly old punt in towards full forward. Who's waiting down? Lloyd has a snap. And pops through. One behind. 2-4. Goes 5-3. A goal here would be handy just before quarter time. They've worked their way back into the game, Essendon, in the latter part of this quarter. Paxman again. Cool night in Melbourne. The crowd most certainly has built in the last 15 or 20 minutes. He finds Bond in the back pocket. Could have gone over the top again to Huskis, but elects to take the kick towards Primus. Dickey is there with him. Lucas for the Bombers provides some height. Another bounce. On centre wing, Primus does well. Appeared to get into his back and he pushes it towards centre wing and Josh Franku. 
exciting young players Port and Frank is certainly in that category Primus again in front spot just heading for the line playing down time and there's not much more of that to play in this first quarter just pops it down the front. Denham has been quiet, he couldn't take it. Dickey is there, but so too is the siren. And quarter time as Kevin Sheedy and his men briskly make their way out to their charges. And after being thrashed by Carlton last week, the Bombers looking to come back. Port, on the other hand, had a 10-goal straight start in their clash against Collingwood and went on to record a 53-point win. It's pretty tight at the moment at quarter time. It, it is Port Adelaide, 5-3, 33 with the ascendancy. The Bombers are 2-4, 16. <laughs> MCG Friday Night Football coming away on footy's home ground 7 4 to 5 3 33 leading Eston by 17 points they're 2 4 16 good first quarter and uh, our banner makers as far as might attend are concerned have been busy especially that one uh, and also that one we've got to read these very quickly but uh, they are using their imagination and 
also using their imagination are our boundary riders. They're down there at the moment, Matt and Mark. Gentlemen. Sandy, well, the two huddles, they couldn't have been closer together. You could just have had <laughs> the two coaches that knew exactly what they were doing. Kevin Sheedy just wants his boys to uh, get to the ball a little bit harder and use it a bit better when they get there and they'll stick with this tall forward line. I can state the obvious, really, that Jack Carroll's pretty happy at the moment. As Tim mentioned in that first quarter, he wants the players to be aware when the ball goes in the forwarders who's responsible for it going out. Shane Bond has a bandage on his knee. That'll be nothing serious. He's just got a cut knee and he'll continue his good form. Thank you, boys. Tim, briefly, your impressions of the first quarter? Well, Port obviously got off to a good start and they've had plenty of their ball across half-back with Bond ha having six possessions, Huskis seven possessions, and Primus, their big ruckman, with six possessions. Interestingly enough, uh, Mark Harvey's had about four possessions. He's actually against Primus after the centre bounces, and Essendon will rely on him getting a lot of the ball in the midfield to counter Primus height around the ground. Second quarter here at the MCG as Friday Night Football continues. Brewer, Primus, both there, neither could take it. The Bombers will be looking for the first one. They desperately like to close the gap early on. Fletcher gives chase, and away goes the big man. He pulls it back nicely in towards half forward, but there's no one home. Good strong mark taken by Carter. He goes to the outer side. O'Connor attempts to spoil Primus and then goes again. Uh, Doolan has a chance for the Bombers, gets the hand pass away to Hardwick, almost runs into the man in white. Hardwick bounces clear though, then goes up towards half forward. No mark taken, play on and they do. Picked up by Wilson, gets a hurried little kick, it's wide, they're not out of trouble yet. Buick tries to soccer off the ground, taken by Paxman, he gets the hand pass away. Now they're out of trouble, up towards centre wing, but intercepting and taking a timely mark is Justin Blumfield. So the Bombers looking for an early goal, Blumfield's kick to Carousella at half forward. What a find he is, Carousella, he's kicking towards full forward, is a good one, Fletcher coming up and so is Lloyd, big built by Mead at the back, pace of this game seems to have accelerated suddenly, Wilson on the bottom and a bounce coming up. 16 to 33. The Bombers with plenty of games at the Melbourne Cricket Ground this year, 11 going in with just five wins. And to think that at one stage this year they were on top of the table and favourite for the flag free kick, McCurry held on to, and you could not have given it to a better bloke in terms of kicking a goal from here for Essendon. And McCurry made it very difficult for the umpire to miss that particular free kick. We'll watch it again in a moment in replay and just pick up who the offender was. McCurry there. Yes, Michael Wilson grabbing hold of him. Should goal, he's 40 metres out, directly in front. He's kicked a beaut if he's got it. I think tonight, Tim, that uh, it is going to be their class players, Fletcher, McCurry, Buick, maybe even Lloyd, the kid, who might make the difference of Essendon's to get back into this. Well, there's no doubt, Bruce, in a game such as this, you do rely on your star players being able to get free at different stages of the game. Essendon appeared to have started the second quarter where they finished the first quarter. They were just beginning to get on top of Port. We see the shot there from the light ship. And there is the big banana. <laughs> 22 plays 33. You're a fruit nut from days gone by, Timothy. Here's the bounce. Primus and O'Connor. Down the wards, pull. What can the big man do? Held it for a long time before giving it away. Dickey shows dash. Brewer from the middle. Port have been able to reply in the past. Burgoyne is quick. He's very quick, this boy. Just got to put some consistency into his game and he could be another one of the league's excitement machines. So it is going to be he who is attempting to answer. The Mark McCurry goal. Kicking from 49 metres. Low, just about there, I think, by the young man. It is. Well, I don't know why Jack had a 
scowl on his face on that instance because he should have been extremely happy that a ball that wobbled through it didn't appear to be travelling that high at all. In fact, we want to hear how they won the ball out of this centre bounce, this crucial centre bounce situation. Dickey getting a handball across to Brewer. That was clever play because the play was very tight. It was a good kick to Burgoyne, but the ball didn't travel through very high at all here. An Essendon defender perhaps should have been down there right on the line. Just watch this. It really was a touchable height there. 3 4 6 3, back in the centre. Yes, the Bombers uh, really should have put a hand to that. Harvey to Pryor as they come through the centre. Well done, Pryor, boots it on. Smother oh, ducking near the Port Power player and a throw against Port. It's a bit stiff bond in the end. But uh, ducked his head. Now, Connor's suggesting. I'm going to bang it long, or is it uh, a signal to a player up the ground? He's going to kick it to the front of the square, and I want Fletcher to take a big one. He had a whole lot of it, couldn't quite. Primus, well done. Comes lumbering out of defence to Carter. Carter's handball, good. James has been an important player, along with Eagleton, since they came into the side. And poured out of trouble through Dickie to centre wing. Free kick there to Eagleton, pushing the back. Silly play then by Harbrook. He pushed Eagleton into the contest. It's impressive this Eagleton. He and James came in in round five. Eagleton's kicked uh, a whole heap of points and a few goals, but boy, he's got the footy this year and he's a very good player. Pulled the front spot. Danaher got a little shove in trouble. Went to the boundary line and a boundary throw in. Again, you have the impression watching Essendon tonight that they're just feeling their way all over again. It's as if they're playing with a whole new team and they're trying to find one another. Paul tries to use the left hand alone. Danaher waiting down, gets the hand pass away to Dolan. A chance now, they've got the numbers to clear. If it sits for Denham, a oh, proper little hand pass is going to be okay to Wellman. He looks towards the outer side, a bit of space, and here comes the charging Lloyd. A good diving mark by this exciting young player. Gives it away now, back to the running Sean Wellman. Couple of bounces still going. Pops it over the top, is it a little too late? Cork was McCurry, and they've lost it. Porter going to run away here, over the top of Olorenshaw, back towards Eagleton. As Bruce said, he's kicked a pile of points. Seven goals, 19 it is, so far for the season. Wellman gets the hand pass away. Denham off to Olorenshaw, but caught already once tonight, but he's clear this time. Pokes a left footer in towards centre half forward. Man playing in front on that occasion was Steve Carter. Here's Huskis, a little underround hand pass. He wants to go on with the advantage, but it will come back. So Port looking to hold them. As the Bombers make their charge, it started late in the first quarter. The Huskis kick not effective at the moment. Fletcher's running wide. Big man's got to lope around and put the hand pass inside. He does so. Pryor's feeling the heat. The hand pass was too high for Fletcher. But he's going to get away with a free kick. Perhaps a little lucky. Pryor swung after he got rid of the ball. Certainly a free kick in that, and they were very lucky then. But just not appearing to play with any confidence at all at the moment. Towards half four, Bond to tidy up. Just slams it high, straight up, back in towards the middle. <laughs> Transborn, frequent flyer points for that leap, but all to no avail. Doolan sweeps it wide, Fletcher a chance. Now he can go really long. Dustin Fletcher in towards full forward. Buick oh. used the body magnificently at the back. Very clever, Tim. That was a fantastic bit of play then by Buick because as the kick was travelling through the air, you look down the ground, there's Buick, there's Primus in front of him, and really he was third in line and just getting his opponent out underneath the ball to take a very smart mark. Really, he's one of the most clever players I've seen since I've been playing football, Sandy. This to make the margin 11 points. And the groans come up. On the follows of the side from Windy Hill. In fact, he's one of the cleverest players I've seen too. <laughs> <laughs> 3563 down the boundary line. Mark. Yes, Sandy, while well, Buick didn't convert there, I think it's going to take something special from the Essendon forwards because Matty Primus, as Matthew uh, mentioned earlier on, his mobility is really hurting the Bombers. He's getting down and he, he stopped them a couple of times as they've tried to come down through the centre. He's just everywhere at the moment. Paxman is, uh, kicks it a long way, and that's no exception. That's a fabulous kick. It's Carter, just oh. missed there by Port, by Will 
Watson, McCurry, good take, then tried to shrug his man off, couldn't quite. Brewer's got hold of it, kicks it cleverly to Dickey. Port finding space at the MCG to Mead. Mead away. He kicked a goal last week, he couldn't believe it. One bounce. <laughs> Hasn't gone inside, kicks the centre half forward and finds Wanganin who's quickly on. Left foot by the champ and he drills it through for goals. It's too good, Wanganin. He's kicked two. Gee, it hurts when Buick misses at one end and Wanganin finds it at the other. 7 3 to 3 5. This game really is all about taking your chances, and as we saw, Essendon had a chance to kick a goal a moment ago. So we see Josh Frank go on camera there, just being treated by the club doctors. Gavin Wanganin, what a wonderful finisher. But the good play there by the Port players, players across half back to get the ball. Well, Port Power have the answers at the moment. 7-3 plays 3-5. Port have kicked two for the quarter. And Essendon just the one. O'Connor tries to poke it out of the middle, but it lands with Donald Dickey. They're backing each other up, supporting each other. This is Carter's high kick to half forward. Again, the leaper is Kranzberg. Stabs it back towards the middle. And O'Connor. Into half forward. Bond was the one in front. Primus had the height. He was just hovering across half back there. Mark Harvey was leading up the ground, just trying to move him out of that hole, but he wasn't going to have a bar of it. His Primus's kick again. It's to the outer side. Big pack of players, including Paul and Kranzberg. It's the latter who takes it, tumbles at the half forward. Clean bowls a couple. Going with a roundhouse right was Roger James. He wanted the boundary line. Huskis is down behind play. Simons gets it out towards McCurry. He's under pressure, loses it. Brewer and Denham. Denham had it spent a little too early. And it's a turnover once again as Port come away. In towards Scotty Cummings. Who's going to be the first to recover? Cummings has it. Goes back now. Wellman's got him. He locks it up. And the umpire eventually comes in and says, line ball, Gavin Bella. <laughs> It was a good contest on that occasion, wasn't it? Yeah. Both players really needed to get the ball to their favoured side. And Wellman able to tie it up. Too easy that time, Cummings. Bouncing ball, Buick gets back, takes the mark. Port lead 7-3 to 3-5. It's a pretty big lead. Short to Pryor. Back to Buick. Trying to improvise a bit here, Buick and find some space. Kicks to centre wing, Simons and Carter taken by Harvey. Bit slow, he is struggling. No free kick for Simons. Brilliant bomb to Franco, to Juskis, and kicks the ball to full forward. Cummings says two against him. Well done, Wellman. Down to the front, Burgoyne. Here's the chance. Wanganini gets it back towards him. Brilliant Wanganini. Wonderful goal. Fantastic. <laughs> Magnificent football by the captain. 8-3 to 3-5, he's kicked three. Just watch the build-up again to this goal. The Port players camping, front and square. There was two of them on that occasion. Bergen off the ground. Just watch the gather here by Wanganin. The awareness, the touch and the finish in the end. And really a very difficult player to stop when he goes forward. Reflex is incredible. 23 plays 51. He's Formula One, isn't he? Oh, G. Wanganin is low special. to the ground and brilliant to watch. Primus again tries to belt it out of the middle. McCurry tried to lock it up. O'Connor gets it away to Honor Enshaw. What can the Bombers do? Harvey from a standing start pokes it towards half forward. Ill directed kick, however, but the mark is taken by Carter. There's Shea Cockatoo Collins. Getting his chance late tonight. Paul almost held it long enough. Harvey again, hurriedly and under pressure. Wanted the safety of the boundary line but didn't find it. Instead found Roger James. Kicked a goal in the first quarter. The high flyers are at half forward. Look at the Cummings tackle. A beauty on Sean Wellman. And he's going nowhere. Interesting, Brewer has picked up Shawnee Denham and Shawnee Denham really has struggled to get the ball tonight. And O'Donnell's also been struggling to get hold of the ball. Paul again would almost work with the player going past. Denham quickly. Danaher under pressure again. 
Everything they do is under real pressure. And Roger James is going to get a chance to pump Port deep into their attacking zone once more. Short pass, it's OK. Brewer is alone. Well, it's going to take a good kick from beyond 50, so he's either going to have to chip the ball up to the top of the square or they're going to have to manufacture a lead inside the 50-metre arc. Well, at the other end of the ground, he found Cummings with ease. Let's see what he does from 55. This is long, but not long enough. Into the square. Big pack of players off hands and over the back from behind. He was uh, excellent last week on Nathan Buckley, although Buckley picked up plenty of touches. He certainly did the job. Kick back into players, marked by Buick, and he's away. He's getting some touches, Buick. Comes through centre half back, kicks the ball to a centre wing, Lloyd the target, just feeding off him, Paxman to Dickey. Port centre found the spaces at the MCG. Boots it back to half forward, Eagles an out number, Cransburg there. Fletcher, little chip pass, okay to Ola Renshaw, who's got Harvey short, kicks it to him now. Mark Harvey at centre wing, Lloyd is away. He decides to bring the ball in uh, towards the 50, Simon's good grab. It's his trademark, isn't it? Floating over the top. Now he's not the most confident man in AFL football when it comes to this kicking goals but he's a beautiful aerialist it's a nice kick in the end by Harvey and Simons with that floating mark now he'll go back a long way and try and get some momentum up but uh, you wouldn't have a whole heap of confidence but boy the Bombers need this and about two more in a hurry to get back into this match Harvey coming off and Lucas coming on Simon from 48 floats it through for behind. There's an untidiness about Essendon tonight that wasn't there um, at the start of this year and hasn't been there for much of the sheety rain, but there's a real untidiness the way they're playing their football tonight. Paxman to bring it back into play. <laughs> There's some eight minutes remaining in the first half here at the MCG. Goes for distance to the outer side. Franco at the bottom. Gets it out. There's a high tackle on Bond. Players allowed to go on. Back to me. He's got the Dickey and Franco both running. Back to Mead again. Now to Franco. Suddenly they're down towards the wing. But also there is Shea Cockatoo Collins. Gives it wide. And that was a shot out by Justin Blumfield. Bond again. Close to the line. Into oh. half forward. Pull. See, they're looking good, Port. Here's Heaver's pass to Cummings. Couldn't quite take it in front of the eyes. Wellman towards the line. Keeps it in play. Doolan. Hand pass over the top to Danaher. They're not out of trouble yet. He pokes it short in towards Carousella. And he takes the mark. Sleeks away from Wilson. Gives it to a Cockatoo Collins. He stammers through the centre to half four. Almost interference. And it is going to be paid. In fact, the advantage is, was paid, and then when the outpost saw no, not good enough, back to Matty Lloyd. Well, the crowd's doing, but the umpire did pay the right decision on this occasion. Was going to allow the advantage, but then saw the Essen play about to be tied up in a tackle. And the free kick will now go back to Matty Lloyd. Certainly a free kick, was manhandled before the ball arrived. Just watching this in the replay, Paxman getting all over him, holding on to him before the ball arrived. And you'd expect Lloyd, who's kicked 47, 47 goals this year to put this one through. 47-20. Coming into this game. Looks all right from the left footer. A few more of those is what they need. But Lloyd gets his first for the night, and the Bombers get their fourth. They're down by 22 points. It was a good positive build-up then by Essendon. They got the ball from half-back. They got the ball into the centre of the ground to Shea Cockatoo Collins. Just watch this. And Shea, who's been out of sorts, just taking, just taking his man on, just buying a little bit of time, and then kicking the ball well to Lloyd, who was manhandled, as we see again there by Paxman. There's a shot from the Whitman's uh, light ship. High above the Melbourne cricket ground tonight. Bombers erode the lead a little bit. Port still going well. Belted by Primus towards Paul. Fletcher takes him on. Paul brings him down. Free kick Fletcher. Mark Doran. Yeah, there's a bit of excitement here in the Port Adelaide forward line. Wellman and uh, Cummings are having a go at each other. And interesting that Heaver's pulled Shaycock to Collins back 
to the back pocket for the Bombers after setting them up just uh, moments ago. Ola Renshaw clever to O'Connor. So again, the Bombers start to mount a little challenge here as they did in the first. Late in the turn, there's Cummings and Wilman. O'Connor centres the ball. Kranzberger target, had a fair bit of it. Handball on by uh, Daniels, missed its mark. Essendon in there and you realise here they sent something, the Bombers. They've Just got a little sniff. Cog, yeah. they? They've got a sniff. There's Wilman and Cummings. Wilman X Crow, Cummings X Essendon. From Western Australia, Cummings. Kicked eight in the States uh, of Origin match this year. Primus. Beautifully done, Buick. Reflexes. Oh, Not great. Not ten, obviously. Goes in board to Pryor. Breaks one tackle. Floats the ball to fall forward. Lloyd was there. Paxman did a terrific job. So did Bond. Back to Denham. He's got to give it off. He does to Hardwick. Beautiful gift to Pryor. Pryor hooks it and kicks it. And it's close. He's just missed. That would have been handy. They've made a sprint here, haven't they? 4 7 to 8 4. They've got to get goals in this little period of play. They've picked up their work rate in the last two or three minutes, but you're right, they've got to hurt Port Melbourne on the scoreboard when they get their opportunities in forward. Did you say Port Melbourne? He's, he's, I he's did a, say Port Melbourne. He's a Victorian boy through and through. <laughs> Paxman to the outer side. Primus. Dickey. To centre wing. Mead. Thought about going on with it. Now just chips it up towards Paul on half forward. He shows agility as he swings one way, then the next. Gets underneath the drop punt. It's high. Cockatoo Collins has got a stand, and he does. Takes the mark and defends to Hardwick. Now Lucas is on the half back. Looking towards centre wing. Wang and in hard at the back. It's very close to being too late then. They've seen a few of these over the years, haven't oh, they? Oh. And do they fight? Yes, they do. But so will Essendon. Don't worry. Here's O'Connor on centre wing. In towards Buick. It's a little quick for him. Franco at toe poke, but stolen by Ola Renshaw. Back to O'Connor. And he goes deep into the forward line once again. The defence is standing strong on Wilson. Wobbles it back towards the half-back flank region where it goes over in front of Blake Carousella and Shane Bond. Cockatoo Collins has been pretty good this quarter since he's gone back across half-back, replacing Gary O'Donnell. Don't forget, of course, Chris Grant is the special guest on Talking Footy on Monday night. But at the moment, we're watching Michael Pryor give it across to Lucas. He tries to get clear, and he's gone for all money. But he was taken high by Paul. It was a high tackle. He just gets a little bit over-exuberant, doesn't he, Paul, on occasions? He had Lucas on toast on that occasion. All he had to do was come in and tackle him correctly and gave away an unnecessary free kick. Probably just trying to hurt him a little bit too much. Lucas to the front of the square. Fletcher was at the back. Well done, Primus at the front. Bond has swept beautifully again tonight. Hasn't missed a game. It's been one of those uh, people who just seems to have grown centimetres since coming to port. Hughes away. Bomber player put to ground in the... Uh, the Shepherd up to half forward. Eagleton, what a good player he is. Hurl, does he get a free kick? Play on call. Lucas 
has got it, brings the ball across the half back. Danaher's got Buick, he's got to use him now. He goes to Buick now. Buick might take this fella on. He may take Pax for nine. No, it doesn't. Daniels it was. Shocking kick to O'Connor. So we've been singing Buick's praises and he's had a fair bit of the footy, but he's been wasteful a couple of times in front of goal when kicking for it, and that time to O'Connor. So Port doing well. Brewers got hold of it in the centre. They lead 8-4 to 4-7. Remember, a win here, and they've got a better than even money chance of making the finals. It would be extraordinary. Carter, 52 metres out, goes for goal. Good looking kick, and he's got it. Oh, no. Well, well that's interesting. Touched by Worm, and that... That was over the line. Well, it looked over the line from here. Clearly a goal. Maybe we're wrong. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Boom. Straight up. Wellman comes. That's, oh, that's <laughs> over. That's a goal. <laughs> it's a good metre over. Oh. However, play goes on. And Michael Pryor takes the mark. He's tucked in the back pocket. So if it, uh, there's a, less than a kick in this one, going the way of Essendon, there could be plenty said. Who knows? Danaher takes the kick, goes up over the centre, over the head of Kransberg. Now Buick is there, but it's Kransberg who takes it. Goes into the middle, Cockatoo Collins, back to Buick. Danger here for Port, but his kick drops short, and it's taken away by Adam Huskus. Gives the hand pass out wide towards Stephen Carter, and Carter's away on the outer side. Looks towards half forward. The big man, Paul, is his target. 50 out. In fact, kicking from 55, just trying to put it up into the square area there for Scotty Cummings. They float over the top, and bursting through was a Brent Heaver. But uh, going through so quickly, he couldn't get his boot to the ball. But a hand to it, and a behind was the end result. Those turnovers can hurt you, though, can't they? Buick again across half back. Pork going control of the ball. There's free players everywhere on their way back. Gary O'Donnell. And Mark Harvey, they're two 200 gamers together. Yeah, both uh, having a spell. Gary, this 221st game tonight. This is Michael Pryor. And they need leadership on the field tonight, Essendon. And when you've got your captain off the ground. And Bruce, you just wonder what sort of effect it'll have on Gavin Wanganee's performance for the rest of the game, too, to have his name taken early in the game. Yeah, because he has been the dominating player, hasn't he, with his three goals. It can begin to worry a player. It can play on his mind having his number taken. Ola Renshaw half back. He's got Hardwick short if he wants him. He'll find him now. So Hardwick centre wing. Wanganin comes in to stand the mark. They need a goal here, the Bombers. Before half time, Wanganin's kicked the centre of the ground. Lloyd coming in, but uh, it was a 50 50 at best. And Brewer chops it off, kicks the ball wide. Lloyd getting back with impacts when Lloyd's won it. Run down by Burgoyne. Well done, Burgoyne. Put the pressure on Wilson on his wrong oh. side and that wasn't a good result he had two players mm. clear one Paxman and the other one inside John Cale unhappy, unhappy there well Bur Burgoyne did all the hard work didn't he he put the pressure on Lloyd from behind forced the turnover and they had plenty of numbers on the way back that first kick from Wilson having to hit its target Lucas Paul Dickey Burgoyne Floating ball to uh, the centre of the ground. Pryor gets rid of James. Good mark, James. Didn't get rid of him well enough. James held his ground. Siren goes for half time. James about uh, 75 metres out. <laughs> You'd love Sam Rocker in a situation like this with his uh, confidence up. 4 7 to 8 6. And there's Jeff Ferry. It's going back a bit, Sandy. <laughs> Some cooler than Nord, wasn't it? Certainly Nord in Adelaide. Sim St Kilda over here, Gavin Wanganine yeah. we see on screen there being spoken to by the umpire, Primus putting a comforting hand on his shoulder, Gavin Wanganine's number being taken in the first half and also Ben Doolan being spoken to by the umpire and of course it was a clash with Doolan that resulted in Wanganine's number being taken Port right on top here though they've made the running, the Bombers got the first goal through Carousella but it's been the power sent. And here's uh, Wanganin and Hardwick. Oh. <laughs> now, we're not sure exactly why Gavin's been reported, but... Uh, oh. Well, Bruce, I really think it's because he charged. I know there wasn't a 50-metre penalty given, but I have seen that on occasions when that 50-metre penalty hasn't been paid and there still has been a report.
half time here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. The Bombers 4 7, the Power 8 6. cricket ground the bombers 4 7 only and port 8 6 so 31 to 54 and wanganeen with three goals but it has been reported and uh, the fact that doolan was also spoken to in that situation you might have been right it might have been because of the charge because that was the the guy that uh, or the player that uh, wanganeen ran into yeah there's no doubt about that bruce and you're right though there should have been a 50 meter penalty paid because there was a late tackle from wanganeen he was certainly late but it'll be interesting to see how the tribunal view that later in the week. Look, there have been two huge stories in football this week. One about AFL rights, more about that in a moment, but one concerning Greg Williams. The Court of Appeal today upheld the AFL appeal so that uh, Greg Williams cannot play at this stage for the rest of this season. Nine matches he's out for. Mark doran has been covering the case. I'll ask him in just a moment, also you, Tim. But let's go to Wayne Jackson and an excerpt from his press conference today. I think what this has done is um, demonstrate to the clubs and to individuals it's a very, very expensive process, if you lose, uh, to, be, um, to be pursuing your um, position uh, through the courts and, and the direct consequence of that is that we would like to think that all of the clubs and all the players 
A, firstly agree by the rules which they play our game or they, they are in our competition and, and then uh, abide by them. So that's uh, Wayne Jackson, the Chief Executive of the AFL. Carlton's response this afternoon, uh, Tim from uh, Stephen Goff, who's their, their Chief Executive, and this is what he had to say. Also, the Supreme Court has made it clear that in certain circumstances the court can intervene in tribunal decisions. The AFL have made it patently clear they are going to have their rules tested as far as possible. I think they should clearly accept what the court has indicated, that a review of their rules, particularly the tribunal, need to be urgently undertaken. So, uh, Stephen Goff, replying there, do you believe Carlton will go to the High Court or try to get to the High Court? Well, I think they'll explore every avenue they yep. possibly can now. And, look, if they win tomorrow, I think they'll even work harder to explore every avenue they possibly can. And I know that we had John Elliott on Talking Football earlier in the week and he had some pretty strong things to say about it too. So I'm sure that they won't leave any stone unturned in their pursuit of getting Greg Williams to be available for the rest of the season. Mark, you, uh, Mark Dorn's been covering this through seven nightly news. Your thoughts on uh, what Carlton might do? Yeah, Bruce, well, what they are doing is they are seeking leave to go to the High Court. They actually tried that today. They tried to get a stay of proceedings so Greg Williams could actually play tomorrow but that was not back but they are going to go on with it it was thought that they might not but they will try to go to the high court which means they have to go back to the three justices of the victorian supreme court of appeals uh during the week if you think uh, covering football used to be tough it certainly is now a 32 page document we had to wade through today that was the uh, the finding of the three judges that uh basically approved the afl's appeal that the nine match try uh, nine match suspension against greg williams for manhandling in their opinion should stay okay well john Elliott uh, because most people have believed this is Greg's last year, one way or the other. John Elliott on Talking Football talked about Carlton, their older players, and just how they were going to either retire en masse or whether or not Carlton were prepared to stick with them. That's what he had to say. As I've always felt when you've had great champions, that it's wrong to tip them out at a club. You're going to have that problem in the next two years, aren't no, you? No, we're not. We won't have it at all. Well, Every one of those champions... And Bradley. Every one of those players, Bruce, will stay on the list if they want to keep playing. We're not going to throw out great players. I think that's what builds tradition in your club. I think uh, Mark spoke to Greg this morning. What's Greg saying about next year, Mark? Well, at the moment, uh, Bruce, well, this morning at least, Greg was saying that next year was really not an option for him. He was thinking rather he'd find out today whether he uh, his career had finished or not. Um, I think he may be a little bit surprised even that they're pursuing the high court, high court option uh, at this stage. I just wonder whether or not he thinks now that perhaps he should have served his nine weeks and then finished the season at the end of the season rather than now because I think that they had been conditioned, Carlton. I certainly believe that uh, Greg's manager, Peter Jess, felt that during the week that Greg will, in fact, be spending the rest of the year on the sidelines. One final thing on the AFL rights. I must say how delighted I was today at the strength from Kerry Stokes, mm. the chairman of uh, the Seven Network, and uh, Gary Rice, our chief executive, and their response to the stories throughout the week and the big story that is happening with uh, first and last uh, options after 2001 and I must say that everybody in football at HSV7 and around Australia is walking a little taller tonight and feeling a little more easily. Well done. We'll take a break. Back with more after this. I got the scarf, got the old coat. I got a 40 game to go to. 40's on, 40's here.
David Johnston with an update from the Seven Newsroom. Hope you're enjoying the game. Treasurer Peter Costello is acting Prime Minister with John Howard in hospital being treated for pneumonia. Mr Howard's been suffering from bronchitis and flu and is expected to stay in hospital for about a week. Seven Chairman Kerry Stokes says he's confident of winning the battle with Channel 9 over TV broadcast rights for football. The war sees Lachlan Murdoch and Jamie Packer pitted against each other. Carlton champion Greg Williams is fighting for his career. He won't be playing tomorrow after the Court of Appeals ruled he must serve his nine-week suspension for manhandling an umpire. Hawthorne's Justin Crawford fined $1,000 for urinating at a casino gaming table. And the Harker takes over Melbourne in the build-up to rugby's blockbuster, the Bledisloe Cup, tomorrow night here at the G. And with his weather tip, David Brown. Windy with a little rain about tomorrow and a top of 14 degrees, becoming fine and mainly sunny Sunday afternoon and 14.
Patrick. Welcome back, Port. In a real huddle just a moment ago, and breaking ranks, Wanganeen, the star of the opening half with his three goals. And the Bombers, well, number two is going to be vital for them, and so is number 18. That's Mercury and Lloyd, respectively. Let's go down to the boundary with Matthew Campbell and Mark Doran, guys. Well, Bruce, trailing by 23 points. The Bomber fans have had little to cheer about, but interestingly, considering our half-time discussion, as soon as the Greg Williams uh, nine-match suspension came up on the scoreboard on a seven-nightly news update, they were cheering, plenty, had plenty to say then, Matty. They certainly were, and perhaps that's a bad sign, Mark, that the Essendon supporters aren't concentrating on what's at hand. I think the players need to, because if Port have a similar sort of half, I think they'll win the game. And Shane Brewer's done a terrific job. He started with Denham on him, and he's been one that the players, I think, that's been the unsung players tonight. And interestingly, uh, sorry, Matty, Bombers captain Gary O'Donnell starting on the bench. Well, O'Donnell uh, has actually just come back yeah, onto yeah. the ground. Yes. Snuck, snuck under your guard, Mark. He's uh, slipped back onto Eagleton. He's look-alike, actually, except he's 10 years younger. Big half this for both clubs. The season on the line for the Bombers. They're 100 to 1, really, to make it anyway, but they have to win tonight to maintain any hope. 4 7 to 8 6. We start the second half of Friday Night Footy. Footy's home ground on seven. The Melbourne Cricket Ground, Wanganeen free kick. He did it again. Pushes wide. Gets out to Daniels. Such a no fuss team port. Kicks the set of half port. Primus the target. Danaher had to build it away. Well done, Cockatoo Collins. Had a good second term. Carousel sits. That's courage. Brewer in hard. No free kick. Wanganeen belts it back to full <laughs> forward. Cummings and uh, Wellman. Chance for Heaver. Bouncing, bouncing. Goal! Just for Port One and Heaver. And the Bombers continue to be at sixes and sevens in the goal square tonight. 4 7 and 9 6. Well, it was an opportunist goal, but really, you'd have to go back to that ball that we just missed it there. Brewer chased the ball back in the air. It was a courageous decision to go back with the fly of the ball. He spoiled Carousel. The ball hit the ground. Port had the opportunity then to take the ball forward again. And that man there on the screen, Brent Heaver, kicking a goal as we go down to the boundary with Mark Doran. Yeah, Tim, I'll take this chance to redeem myself. The reason Gary O'Donnell's starting on the ground is that Ben Doolan slipped off late. He's now, in fact, walking around the boundary and looks like he's going into the rooms. Uh, maybe uh, still a bit of pain there after that clash with Gavin Wanganeen. Thanks, Mark. This is Danaher. Under pressure, but getting his kick wide. That's Fraser. Started on the bench. Floating pass towards Lloyd is OK. A couple of metres in front of Paxman. Plays on quickly. Swings round. Goes on to the left foot with a long bomb in towards O'Connor. Asks the question. It's nothing from the umpire, but a behind. And the goal umpire. Jack Kyle and his trusty team. Included in that bunch, Jeff Morris. No doubt Sandy Essendon said to Dylan, go out there, just run around, see how you feel. And obviously he's just too sore and he's going back into the dressing room some more attention. Huskis had to be accurate and was. Steve Carter towards centre wing now. Primus has got Wanganeen running past. He uses him long and low. He spears the pass into the pocket and it's a beauty to Scotty Cummings. Well, Port fans will be loving this at the moment, and we hope you're enjoying it on the number one football station on seven, your home ground for this mighty game. And if he kicks this, Bomber fans are going to be looking to the heavens for something to keep their season alive. It's a difficult kick. He looks nervous, too, as he lines up. Kicked four last week against Collingwood. Has two so far tonight. But his first kick had very little confidence. Again, tentative, starting it right, coming back. But uh, needed another metre or so. And another behind goes on the ball. Nine seven plays four eight. So the score almost doubled. Fletcher to the outer oh. side. Well, maybe that tells the story of the night. Roger James, can he make him pay? A high floating kick. Fletcher's underneath it. He desperately wants the mark. Oh, lock it up, but he can't do that. Out comes Burgoyne. He's highly
really talented, but on the last line of defence is Cockatoo Collins and Shays away to Kranzberg on half-back, and he takes the mark. It's a good kick by Cockatoo Collins. Kranzberg in board. They've missed their mark so often tonight. Lucas O'Donnell has had a dreadful evening so far. Primus just shrugs his man off and then kicks it towards half-forward. The Dickey can take on uh, Kranzberg here. He's teasing him. Find some space, kicks the ball to full forward, needs Cummings here to come from the back world on Fletcher. Front spot. Good player, Fletcher. They had to be a crumb then, though, didn't it, Bruce? Cummings had to hit something, he had to hit Fletcher's hands. Wellman just a bit far. Carousella was good enough. Fraser on the ground, Buick, Lunfield oh. missed it. Primus like a rover to Heaver. Heaver chips it cleverly to Paul out of his hands by O'Donnell, so Paul didn't take the mark, and then, then high tackle on Cockatoo Collins. He is a little predictable, Paul. Gee, he's a good competitor, but when something goes wrong, you can bet your bottom dollar he'll give a free kick away in the next passage of play. He's just got to take oh. that out of his game. It's a free kick to Bond. Plays on. In fact, the advantage is going to be paid. He gives it away to Adam Huskus. He goes high into half forward. Donald Dickey's got to be one of the flyers. Gee, there was a big pack there. Dickey was smack bang in the middle. Hardwick at the bottom of the pack. Out comes Shane Brewer. Had it for a moment. Wants Dickey. He's shoved in the back. Play on says the umpire and he does. Danaher waits. Lucas works hard. Sockers it clear. Up towards Simons on the outer wing. Michael Simons has it now. Thought about Carousella. Decides to come inboard towards the Ricky Olorenshaw. The pass is on towards Lloyd but far too far. Mead will do the tidying up the port and do it very nicely. Towards the halfback flank. He had a couple of options there. Chose Jones and Cotton and the defence working well there's Brent Heaver James that gives it away towards that man Paul again at the back is Wilson with him is Buick it's going to be Darren Buick in the back pocket spearing it back towards Pryor on the centre wing Swings play in towards the middle. He's got Lucas there. The loping left footer from the Western District looks towards Matty Lloyd. He's in front of Paxman and he takes a fine mark. Uh, that move of Lucas into the ruck, he's not taking the centre bounce knocks against Primus, but once the ball has been played, the Essen boys are playing through him. He's going in and around the square. Primus is dropping into defence. And Essendon hopeful that they can get the ball to Lucas. That long kick on that occasion going to Matty Lloyd. And that's the exact play that they're trying to set up. So Lloyd on a 45 degree angle. But he's on the right side. The left footer goes high. Goes across. And has put through a ball. Looks dangerous though, doesn't he? Every time the ball goes in to his area, he always looks like he's capable of taking a mark. He's still a young man. He's there one big hope, isn't he? Up forward tonight and most of the year, Tim. Short to Daniels. One on one, you'll back him more than 50% of the time. That's a good record for a forward. Daniels to centre wing. Mead with a drop on Kranzberg, who held his ground pretty well. Franco around the body. High kick to half forward. O'Donnell. Good mark. So important that he has some influence here, the captain. Best and fairest in that premiership year. Danaher. Lucas. Well done. He must have felt uh, useless. Daniels coming. Now, Lucas a fair way from home. Huskus is on the mark. He's a long kick, uh, Lucas. Brings it to centre half forward. And Simons takes a beauty. On his chest in the end. really forced the kick to there because Matthew Primus sat in the hole in front of Matthew Lloyd. Lucas looked up, that's where it was going to go then. Lloyd really having to lead towards centre-half forward, but the very talented and enigmatic Simons taking the ball. Get a good view from behind here, don't we? Simons rolls himself up, kicks it, gives it everything he's got. Good kick! Well done! Well, the reaction to that goal suggests that Essendon will lift here and make a game of this. 5-9 to 9-7. Yes, they really just do need to pick up their work rate to see Adam Huskis really making Scotty Lucas earn that. And that was very close to a 50-metre penalty on that occasion. 
But Essendon really need now to try and get the ball out of the centre bounce area, get into their forward line quickly, put pressure on Port. So maybe that can be the goal that can light the spark for Essendon. Still a long way to go. 39 plays at 61. The Primus floats. Pry gets caught. Ball is held up in the middle there. Wobbly one down towards Fletcher. Burgoyne on his hammer. He pokes it even wider. James a chance for Port. Now they've been able to answer every challenge. This is a big test. James kick in towards half forward. And the free kick is going to be paid towards Cummings. He was taken high and he'll have a shot almost directly in front. Some 45 metres out. That's been the story of the night, hasn't yeah. it? Really, Essendon have kicked the goal and then Port have been able to Straight take the down. ball down into their forward line quickly and set up the opportunity to kick a goal. Just watch this, Wellman grabbing hold of Cummings ever so slightly, but it's definitely there. He did interfere with him before the ball arrived. So Cummings for number three. Looking nervous again, though, as he lines up to kick. one that 
was uh, where Mead caught one and we'll uh, keep an eye on him. I'm sure the boys on the boundary will be spot on that. But now let's concentrate on Cummings going for number four. And this goal for goal act to continue here at the MCG. Point blank range, tight angle. Not a drama for the big man. Four goals to Scott Cummings all at that end of the ground. And Port 11-7 continue to say to the Bombers, catches in the game. Well, they just can't break that pattern, Essendon. They had their chance, they kicked the goal, they took the next ball out of the centre into the forward line, but they just weren't able to capitalise. As we look at the play that led to this goal, Mead just keeping the ball in front of him, probably a free kick in the back there, but Wilson, clever, just holding on to the ball and then driving the ball along. 6, 10, 11, 7, Matthew Campbell. Yeah, Bruce, uh, Darren Mead finds himself on the half-forward line after every kick-in. He's the designated second kick after the first kick goes to the point of the square. He just takes off to get the next contest, and it's working very well for him. As a result, they're getting gold. So, Matty uh, Campbell on the boundary line. He's in all of Port's uh, work this year. Buick, high ball out of the centre. The Bombers still yet to kick two goals in a row tonight. Kranzberg. Port's had all the answers. And Bruce Buick is a very clever player. Since he's gone into those centre bounce situations, he's been able to get the ball out simply because he knows that Primus is hitting the ball across his body to the left-hand side on each occasion. Kranzberg works his way to the front. Again, Buick there. High tackle on Simons. Play on. Franco caught up. Again, the uh, umpire letting it go. Poor well played to Wilson. Port, very good in close here. Burgoyne runs it over the line. Boundary throw in. 46 to 73. As McCurry, physiotherapist with him. It appears that it might be a shoulder injury, I think. Big risk, isn't it? To have him out there. Dolan back in the uh, rooms. Simons, well done. Fraser, Olorencia, high oh. tackle, free kick. No, holding the footy, sorry. Thought Eustace was over the shoulder. Ducked his head. Brewer's got it. He looks to go charging forward. He needs a lead. The pass has got to be good for Cummings. It's not. And now a chance for Essendon through McCurry to give it away. Lucas looks towards centre wing. Can Essendon swing it back into their forward zone and make them pay? Huskis towards the line. Slaps it over the back. And a throw in on centre wing. Down to Mark Doran. More news on uh, Mark McCurry. Yes, Sandy, you saw the physio out there. At, uh, from watching a few yards away, he reminds me a lot of watching Wayne Carey when he came back from his shoulder reconstruction, although it was Wayne's left shoulder that was the problem. It's Mark's right shoulder, it appears. Definitely favouring it, and uh, with the physio out there, I wouldn't think it'd be too long till he comes off. An interesting Ben Doolan back on the bench, but looking very sore and sorry. So you're saying, Mark, he won't be getting any jobs doing deodorant ads if he can't lift his arm? Uh, I think you're spot on there. Well, it really makes you wonder whether or not there's another fit player on the Essendon bench, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Because McCurry cannot lift his arm. They're keeping him on the ground. Well, all Arantxa has decided to go the long way home. But Lucas from half back goes towards half forward. The Port defence has been fantastic. Look at Bond. He swings around and he goes back towards Paul, who popped one in the back. And he'll take it on centre wing. Plenty of room in that forward line. He elects to give it to his captain, Gavin Wangani. Now, where is Scotty Cummings? He's charging forward. Fletcher's there with him. Cummings close to the boundary line. Forced onto the left foot. Floats it in towards the forward zone. Now, Burgoyne's very clever. He's a very clever player, this boy. Oh, and there he is in action. Peter Burgoyne. Saw him at the start of the year, Tim, and he was dead set an excitement machine then, and he is now. I saw him in an under-18 competition last year playing for South Australia and he really had that look of class all about him. I wasn't surprised to see that Port took him on. You see a long lead out here by Cummings, almost getting the ball. A good kick on that occasion, getting the ball quick on his boot and just winning that man-on-man -man contest here, Burgoyne, enough to create a goal. Kranzberg off the ground, Denham's come back on, so Harvey's sitting it out. 6, 10, 12, 7, still McCurry in the forward pocket. Burgoyne was terrific. Primus belts it away. Port go in for the kill now. Danaher. Dickey. Brewer. 
Still with Brewer. Comes back to Mead. Hard and long kick to the pocket. Fletcher underneath it. Wanganeen. Well done to take it from Fletcher, really. And a boundary throw in. The one thing you know about Port is that they're not going to drop their work rates. We see a fairly disappointed James Hurd on screen there. They're not going to drop their work rate. They'll continue working as hard from the first bounce to the last. Heaver, well done. Good smother though by Cockatoo Collins. Brilliantly played. The handball's okay. It's out in front and Pryor's away. Can he pick it up? He does at the second attempt. Maybe a chance now for Esther, but no one downfield, so he's got to head towards the boundary line. He does that, and Huskis can't keep it in. That's a problem. If you do send so many players back into defence, it means that you're going to have to buy some time to get the ball yeah. back out of there so that they've got time to run back up get the down. field to be somebody that you can kick to. And they've done that now with a throw-in on centre wing. A crucial seven minutes in this game. Josh Franco's hand pass is OK towards Bob. He's a real live wire. Back to Franco, who's such an exciting player. They've got them everywhere at the moment. In towards the half forward line, there's a big fly and a strong mark taken by Justin Blumfield. Back towards the centre. Holding on there, certainly of the uh, Essendon jumper. Umpire says no, play on. And so they do. Inside 50 goes the kick from Lloyd and an excellent mark taken by Carter. Steve Carter tucked in the back pocket goes laterally to the big man Primus who again has done the job tonight and done it extremely well. Wider even further to Stephen Daniels and now they've opened it up because Adam Huskis, one of the best last week and he's having a mighty time at the moment, looks towards the half forward line, Paul is down there, he's got the big man now, he swings out of the pack, goes in towards full forward, Cummings uses the body beautifully thought about playing on and will go back and shoot for goal number five well it's a good one to win then by pool and scott cummings just backing himself in to do a body contest here against dustin fletch and gave him the push before that just getting dustin fletcher off balanced and a good strong mark and he goes back now to line up for his fifth goal and some terribly worrying signs now for the Dons. Fifteen metres out. He has gold and he's kicked number five and Porter looking the goods here at the MCG. Well, dare we say it, one of the finals, Port v Adelaide at Football Park. I'd like to see that. Well, Essendon have looked flat for most of the night. They've been able to get themselves going at odd occasions, but they really haven't been able to string five or ten minutes of good play together, whereas Port have just kept going at the one pace, as I mentioned a moment ago. Fourth time this year, Cummings has kicked five goals for Port Adelaide in a match. He's had no big bags for Port. He kicked eight in the state of origin. But he's on song tonight to uh, add to that total. He's been uh, just too good up forward for both Wellman and Fletcher. And two good players for Port across half back, Bruce in Huskis and also Bond. They've been able to win their one-on-one -on -one contests and then they've been able to create as they've gone down the field. They've been very good play makers all night. 16 to 13, 7. The power well and truly on their way to uh, the eight. Primus belted out. Danaher, Denham, back to centre wing. Wanganeen, who has been the architect, kicks the ball beautifully to Cummings as he's done all night. It was going to be a hard one to mark. Cummings tries to brush one, two off. Blomfield's got him. It's going to be a ball up. Well, Wanganeen and Cummings between them have really hurt their old team, haven't they? There's no doubt about that. And I wouldn't mind if Mark Doran could perhaps find out from the Essendon bench whether or not Mark Harvey and Peter Kranzberg are injured because Mark McCurry certainly is injured and he's out on the ground at the moment. Eight goals between Wanganeen and Cummings tonight. Here's Paul. Hand pass is OK. This is a high kick in towards full forward. Simons runs into the pack. Has given away a free kick, I fear. This looks like another one to Paul. Umpire 
going across to Michael Simons now, who's asking the question and is being told. Mark Doran down on the sidelines. Mark? Yes, Sandy, I did check that just moments ago, thinking the same thing, Tim, and it appears that Mark Harvey is not injured, uh, but I'd say he's uh, very disappointed at being still benched. Well, there's no doubt knowing how much Harves loves his football and that he would be disappointed with what's happened here tonight. As we see, Scott Cummings about to line up for number six. And this certainly is rubbing salt into the Essendon wounds. The other thing that's so important for Port is percentage. Because you've got clubs like Collingwood who have a good percentage but need four points. Now, let's see Cummings. No worries at all, and Porter on their way. Six goals to Scott Cummings, and four of those this quarter in a big term for the power, who started at 8-6, and they're now 14-7, so just the one blemish in this quarter. Once again, Poole, he really is a good heavy body worker on that occasion. He just created a little bit of space. Definitely a free kick there, but pull that work at that bounce. A slick handball. And Port, really, they've attacked the goal square in this third quarter, and that's why Cummings has been the benefactor. That man on screen now, impressive statistics. He's had eight kicks, eight handballs, and 19 hitouts to date. Just the two marks. Primus is the man we're talking about. Lucas gets his hands on it. On the oh. cut off by Primus doing the roving. Then runs out of ideas but goes back to Brewer. Brewer kicks the ball to Cummings. Has got him. What a quarter by Port Adelaide. And for Scott Cummings. Now he's kicked eight goals on this ground twice for Essendon. Once in his debut in 1994. And then uh, against Footscray. So he knows what it's like to kick a bag out here. The way he's going tonight, he might kick 10 for the first time in his career. He's kicked four in this quarter, six for the match. Harvey on the ground for uh, Essendon. Simon's off. Be a few Bomber fans around the ground tonight scratching their heads and saying, gee, we shouldn't have let him go. I think he's missed one. Six goals, four. So he's had a few shots. And Six, ten to fourteen, eight. And there's no doubt when you're playing against your old side and you're playing against a coach that perhaps doubted your ability, let you go, you really have got some extra motivation, haven't you, to perform well. You don't need any more incentive than that. So Fletcher will bring it back in to Lucas. Marks in the back pocket. Playing game number 31, Scott Lucas. Drifting it in towards the middle, past Denham. It was a pretty ugly kick, really. Primus decides to take them on, and uh, he's gang tackled by three. Well, the fact that Essendon hasn't had a big man out there tonight really has affected their performance. Paul, speaking of big men, Heaver. Watch out, Scotty Cummings. He soccers off the ground. He gives it to his teammate. He goes bang straight over the top. Was that Brent Heaver again? From right behind. Probably had a little <laughs> more time. Or could have done it differently. Who knows? Uh, he tried to bowl the mystery ball when all he had to do was put one on the pitch, Sandy. <laughs> Thanks, Warren. Eh? Here's Buick. Has to go over his mark. Short to Wellman. Been stunned in this quarter, uh, Essendon. Fletcher. Harvey, well done to Fraser with a bit of pace, but to almost run down. Lloyd, the target, Paxman with him. Still, Paxman had a high tackle. Primus has been fantastic. Bond from half back. Heroes everywhere for Port. Paul front spot, too big, too strong, too good. He's been impressive tonight. <laughs> it's his 13th possession and his fourth mark. Sort of a player too that uh, the others grow when they're close to him. 
So uh, he has a presence, doesn't he? Yeah. He has a physical presence. Pushes wide to Huskus. Huskus 50 metres out. Not bad. Good kick. Heaver gets rid of one and gives away a free kick in the back. So Cockatoo Collins to get it. 6 10 to 14 9. More than double the score. Gives it to Lucas with a minute remaining. And it's interesting. Port is the only side in the eighth coming into round 17 with a percentage less than 100. That most certainly will change tonight. And they will grow. Here's Danaher spearing a pass in towards the forward line. And the winged one takes them up. That's Mercury. One of the last kicks coming up for the quarter from Mark Mercury, who's kicked a couple of goals. One in the second, one in the third. But it's been all one-way traffic so far in this quarter. He starts that to the right. And the sorry tale of Essendon continues. That's the game the Dons were lucky as we see a couple of enthusiastic young Dons fans still happy, still smiling there. Just glad to be getting out for the big night here at the MCG. Probably gone on to practicing the Harker now. Because uh, come 11 o'clock tonight, the crew will move in and completely change the face of the MCG for the big clash, which of course you'll see on seven. Oliver Enshaw swings it around his body, in towards half forward. Lloyd was amongst a big pack of players. Lucas almost slips. He needs a leg break badly and he doesn't get it. Johnny Cale down the sidelines with Jeff Morris. Another of the former stars of the South Australian National Football League. for West Adelaide. Played in the Premiership in 1983 too, Sandy. Huskis to the half-back flank. Frank who late coming over the top of Michael Pryor. But goal to no avail. It is three-quarter time. Although Pryor has the kick. He is 75 metres out. And he needs one of the greatest torps ever seen. And he doesn't get it. So no addition to the score. And Sheets calls his charges over. They've got just six goals on the board. In fact, they've managed two each quarter to date. So that really does tell the story as far as Eston's concerned in the hopes they may have of getting back into this clash in the final quarter. But it's not over yet. We'll see what they can do. Porter, on the other hand, they are rocking in Adelaide. They'll be rocking at Billy Bells. It's 14-9 to 6-11.
of Friday Night Football. Looking down at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, the city of Melbourne, and uh, the Whitman's light ship high in the sky. Tomorrow night here at the Bledisloe Cup. But tonight it's Port Adelaide charging away from Essendon, six goals to two in the third quarter, 14-9 to 6-11. Winner of the Mitre 10, hey Port, show us your Donald and we'll show you our shade. Not bad, is it? 19-9, 10 out of 10. Talking footy, Monday night, sees a little bit from last week with John Elliott. Everybody's talking at me. I'm sorry, Shane's not here because you know, I've got a few things to bones to pick with him. <laughs> That's why he's not here, Jack. No, I saw you. <laughs> you were coming in, I think. He might have just headed north. Just headed off, yeah. I'd love to see a forward terrorising. Well, it doesn't happen very often in football, well, does it? You most, used to most, do it. That's why I love it. Yeah. You yeah, you terrorise. Back and get it easy. <laughs> But we're going to keep undisciplined players in the competition, doesn't we? Otherwise, yeah. we won't have any highlights. Yeah, I mean, if we have everyone sticking to the team rules, then nobody, nobody will be there as a highlight. He wasn't speech, uh, speaking as a potential coach there, was he, Tim Watson, when he said about discipline? Monday night, our special guest, Chris Craft, they're the Times, 10.30 Adelaide, Perth, Melbourne and Sydney, Brisbane, midnight. Let's go down to Mark and uh, Matthew. Well, Bruce, the Bombers have finally succumbed to the inevitable and Mark McCurry has come off after receiving treatment on that shoulder. And we can confirm, Tim, that there's nothing wrong with Mark Harvey, but he's out on the ground. Uh, Port? Well, Jack Cowell's very happy. Indicative of that is the fact that Cotton's only spent eight minutes on the ground. Brennan Lade hasn't even come back out yet. He hasn't had a run yet, so Jack is very happy. Wants to win this last quarter, wants to win every quarter of the match, as they did against Collingwood last week. Start of the final quarter, Friday night football of the Melbourne Cricket Ground. 6-11 to 14-9. Port Adelaide crushing Essendon. Wilson's kicked to Burgoyne. Blumfield with him. Burgoyne turns him inside out, kicks to full forward. Cummings has kicked six already. Danaher with courage to get back. James, well done, good handball. Wanganeen put on the ground. That'll please the Bomber supporters. But he has been superb, Wanganeen. I'm sure Essendon would have loved to have had a leader like him on the ground tonight. When it was tied early in the first half, he led the way with three goals. Reported in the first half. Had big years in 93, those two, didn't they? O'Donnell and Wanganina. Brownlow, best of first between them and the Premiership. Oliver Inshaw to Carousella. Blake Carousella looks towards the centre wing. Too wide for the big Rhino, O'Connor. Not happy with it, and there'll be a throw. Matty Lloyd's been pushed out to centre half forward, or he's playing up the ground, and Peter Gransberg is playing back at full forward at the top of the square. On the outer side, start of this final quarter, Port looking to lift their percentage and climb the ladder, and looking towards September, Shane Brewer stabs it into half forward, and Daryl Paul has got to be paid. The longer the game's gone, the better this fella has played. And it's really an ominous sign. If they can keep this bloke fit at centre-half forward, and really they're looking the goods to make the finals. Now, it's terribly important to have a player across half forward who has a presence, can take the ball in the air, and also is able to create goals for the smaller players. And that's, this man on screen at the moment can do all that. He's only playing his eighth game for the season, but he has kicked eight goals. It's just been an incredible year for Port Power. From 47 metres, the drop punt is slightly across the face. In fact, it slides up against the post eventually, one behind. So it looks as though that behind that was a goal earlier in the match will be of no consequence whatsoever. Perhaps a very small part of the signature, but that is all. Buick to Olorenshaw. And half back quickly on to Pryor. Pryor delivers to centre wing. Lucas the target, Mead has had a terrific match. Danaher read it pretty well, but couldn't take it. Cut off, well done, Hardwick breaks a tackle. Down low was uh, Harvey, no free kick. Essence had uh, nothing happened in a fluent motion all night for them. It's all been difficult, hasn't it? Well, partly to do with the fact that Port have applied a lot of pressure, a lot of tackling pressure, a lot of body pressure, but also Essendon have kicked the ball away on a number of occasions and chosen the wrong option. Carousella handballs to Carter. 
Carter kicks it out wide for Port, looking for the boundary line or a Port player. Donald Dickey's onto it. Wonder if he knows that he was part of the uh, Mitre 10 prize tonight. Handball on to Wilson. Not so many possessions tonight, but he's still been very good. He's kicked inside 50. Blumfield's got the mark. Good effort on that occasion. Still only a kid. To another kid. So one teenager to another, an 18 year old to a 19 year old, Lucas. He hasn't stopped trying. He's had a good season. Yet to miss a match. Wide to the other teenager. The big star in Lloyd, clever to Price. Should go on to Danaher, can't. Held up by those uh, big arms of Mead. That's been their problem all night. They've had plenty of the ball. In fact, they've had more possessions, but they've gone to short targets and then the play's been held up again, so they've lost the ability to run. Ricky Olorenzo hasn't lost the ability to fly. A beauty by Ricky as he goes in towards half forward. It was almost as if he picked out Donald Dickey, who said, thank you very much. He gives it off to Huskus, and Adam Huskus pumps a kick over centre wing. Cockatoo Collins couldn't take the mark. Prize in trouble. He dropped it like a hot potato. It could prove costly. They spear it into Cummings. He'll kick another one. Turn around and kick it. No, he'll take the glory and go back and pump this into the stands for number... I'm running out of room here. Seven. How many times have we seen that happen tonight, though, where Essendon have given up the ball across half four with a poor kick, poorly executed. Often it's been the wrong option tonight, too. On that occasion, Port just catching them off side on the way back. It's as so if they see the black of the jumper and kick to the opposition. So totally it's been amazing tonight. Kind of characteristic, isn't it? Yes. Oh. Incredible. No. Scott Cummings. It's been his night for one so far tonight as he attempts to boot his seventh. 6 4 he has at the moment. Unstoppable. 7 4 now. And a port power roll on. 15 10 as they hit the ton. Essendon a 6 11 47. And Michael Price, just watch this. Michael Price just gone off the ground for this error. He comes back onto the ball and just showing the Port player there, Franco, far too much of the ball. In those tight situations, you just have to do something quickly and instinctively. He chose the wrong option. Port has kicked the last five goals of the match. Cummings and Wengen in between them. Kicked ten goals. Buick, Simons, through the centre, oh. Oller in short, high tackle, it was a late call but free kick, I mean, just run out of space all night haven't they? Yeah that was a high tackle but I mean it was still the pursuit of the yeah. ball wasn't it? They've been far more vigorous than Essendon all night. Oller in short's kicked to half forward, Franco finds some space, beautiful kick to Dickey, now Wanganin's loose, he's away. Wanganin's got hold of it, Burgoyne runs for him, Wanganin one bounce, delivers beautifully to Cummings, fantastic football Wanganin. He's played a marvellous game, and so is this fellow. Oh, I bet there's some Essendon fans just secretly clapping this little bit of play underneath the blanket. What a piece of football. But they're in bed already. Cummings from about 50. Well, he, he has kicked eight twice in his AFL career. He kicked eight in the state of origin as well. Got eight in his debut here against Sydney in 94. And they got eight against Footscray a couple of years later. Gee, you wonder how he didn't make the Essendon side regularly at full forward, don't you, when you look at him now. 50 metres out. This to equal his best ever tally in the AFL. Now he's sprayed it. Out the fall or behind? A point. So it's kick 7 5. It's not bad. Actually, he's, he and Essendon are all square. 6 11 to 7 5. It's 6 11 to 15 11. He's kicked the Essendon score himself. Buick. Asking Simons to do a lot. In fact, to beat three. Now, Frank, who tried to spoon it back, Simons did well. And he gets a tap on the head from Ricky Olorenshaw for his efforts. Booted a goal in the third term. With that Michael holding run up. And did well to lock that one. On left 
half forward for Port. Simons couldn't take it, Ola Renshaw can. Flat looking helicopter punt up towards the centre wing. Back again it comes towards Carousella. He's going to be set upon. The kick is smothered. Brewer is almost handed on that occasion by Carter. He loses it eventually to Hardwick. Harvey does some heavy work, but he gets his kick in towards half forward. There's going to be a free kick, I think, going the way of Port, and it'll be taken by Dickey. Well, if he looks up quickly, he's got Paxman on his own. And away he goes. Most of the players in one half of the ground at the moment, and Paxman will look for his full forward. Out comes the charging, coming! One grab, and this time he'll go again for number eight. Ten marks. It's uh, Josh Franco behind play, suffering a little, but if he can turn around and see Scott Cummings boot this one, I think the pain may disappear. That's the hardest mark you can possibly take in league football when you're flat out and the ball is coming at you and you're under pressure like Scott Cummings was on that occasion. Gee, he's been good tonight. The whole port side has been good tonight. The start of the night, though, when he shot for goal, he didn't appear to have the confidence. Now he's almost grinning yes. as he comes in to shoot. He's seeing the ball like a pumpkin at the moment. 45 degree angle. Distance will test him. He's kicking from 52 if he's going to maintain that accuracy. Well, it's not a bad looking kick from Scotty Cummings. Well, he's got seven goals, but he's got it in the form of 6-6. Six, six. Or 7-6. Eight goals. Need a calculator here. As, uh, when Josh Franco appeared to cop one. But he'll be okay as the play goes on. And Lucas streams down the ground for Essendon. Maybe here's a ray of sunshine. Because Harvey's in the square. He just needs a kind bounce. And the veteran will pick a goal. Lucas has got the ball plenty of times tonight. He's kicked it away on a number of occasions, takes a number of bounces. Not a lot of pressure on that play resulting from a kick out. The poor player's pushing up the ground, and that's why Harvey found himself on his own. Seven eleven to 15 12. Essendon's first goal since the 13 minute mark of the third quarter. They'd only scored a behind in almost a quarter of footy been a real drought for them. Lucas has had 20 kicks tonight. Good. Hardwick is at 50 Good against yeah. Primus. Yeah. It is. So Hardwick's going to have a shot. He'll come up to about 30 metres from goal. And this is the type of play that really Hardwick doing all he can to get the 50 but this is the type of play that really annoys a coach when you have a side down like this and percentage is going to be a factor in the lead up to the finals Port really struggling coming into this game with a percentage of 99.6 a poorer percentage than any other side in the eight at the moment and it will matter and these six pointers do matter it's only kicked one goal this season Hardwick but should make it two it's got it for the Essendon fans to wave their flags tonight about but there's still a number of them staying here to watch this last quarter we see Harwick just working on the umpire to get the free kick in the first place and that's just undisciplined by Matthew Primus he's played a wonderful game tonight but Jack Cale wouldn't be happy with that bit of play there first time two in, two in a row Maybe something positive could come out of this final term for Essendon. And Port will be keen to build, as Tim said, on that percentage. Brewer, Josh Franklin, towards Port. Oh, they're streaming down the ground. Gavin Wanganee, finish it off with a goal. Under pressure, he kicks. It's high, it's close. Oh. Is it there? Yes! That is sensational play, and they've done it all night except for once. Answered every challenge. What about his acceleration here, oh. when he's about to be run down after the first bounce? It was just superb the way, and Josh Franco just getting the ball quick on his boot, pull pushing up, and Wanganine here, and he accelerated that quickly, that Chris Danaher, who really thought that he had him in his sights and he was going to be able to knock him off his feet, 
didn't quite get there when he lunged. And Wanganoon, four goals tonight. Terrific performance. 16, 12, 8, 11. Well, we've seen a champion at his best tonight. Wanganoon. Wilson, Ola Renshaw, O'Connor and Hart. It's going to be a bounce. Their first win at the MCG, Port Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> O'Connor and Primus. The power will win uh, at the sacred ground for the first time. Now, what about uh, Mark Dore on the uh, injury toll for the Bombers? Yeah, Bruce, I think it's getting worse. The physio was out to talk to Dustin Fletcher a moment ago, and it now looks like Mickey Pry is going to come on, and Fletcher might be making his way to the bench. Not a good side at all, the Bomber bench. Hardwick to Fraser, cut off by Dickey, taken by Bond. Bond back to half forward. O'Donnell stands his ground, had a fair bit of it, not paid. Play on called. Hasn't had much luck tonight, Gary O'Donnell. Three kicks, one mark, no handballs, three touches. Boy, it's Pry getting ready to come on for a Fletcher, as Mark told us. Paul has been terrific. It's only his second game in uh, ten weeks. He missed eight with a groin injury. As Tim said he's got better as this match goes on, and he's going to be a, a focal point in the run to September. Port's performance all year has been remarkable, hasn't it? We all expected that they'd struggle to win a game, and now they look like they're home, and they'll actually play off in the finals in their first year. They might play a final at home. Burgoyne to Dickey, to Burgoyne, back to Franco. Franco goes for hooks it and just misses. Well, we thought there's Fletcher off for prior. We thought Fremantle had done a good job by winning eight games in their first year. Adelaide couldn't make the finals in 91 after they looked promising early. West Coast in 87 looked a big chance and then couldn't do it. This team, with a, a less favourable draft situation and conditions going in, they've taken all before them. History and tradition. Denham from half back. Look at Primus. He continued to chase and chase and almost got him. To half forward, Lloyd couldn't take it. An attempted soccer off the ground went straight to O'Connor. The big man gets caught. Comes back to Lloyd again. He gets out of the pack and goes goalwards, but pulls it away to the right. And one behind is the end result. Cotton. He's coming back out onto the ground for Port. Expense of James. And it looks as though Laid is going to get a belated run as well. Who's picking up Cotton, isn't it? Well, I hope someone will reel him in. Here's Huskis in the back pocket. I'd like to see him thread one through, actually. <laughs> That's enough. I know it's late. There's a big margin, Tim. But it's only round 17, my boy. The Fletcher on the bench. Primus has done an excellent job all night. The smaller brigade are still running. Trying to set it up then was Josh Frankie. Matty? And down on the boundary, Matty Primus coming off for a well-earned race. If it was the home ground, they'd be going berserk. And I thought they were saving Brendan Lade for the All Blacks game. He finally gets a run. Yeah, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Here's Eagleton. Into half forward in towards Cummings territory. At the back is Cotton, he's just come onto the ground. Oh, they did reel him in then, Tim, I'm afraid. Carousella will defend and chip short towards O'Donnell. Plays on to Buick, all academic now. As Darren Buick goes towards centre wing. O'Connor just trying to palm it down to Michael Simons working in front. But again, good hassling work by Stephen Daniels, forcing a throw in. Sandy, Bruce, if you look on the scoreboard, you'll see that attendance. 33,076. Here's Paul, gives it away to Brewer. Wider towards Wilson. Well done by Franco, who's been busy tonight. In towards Brewer again, pinpoint accuracy. Beautifully done, and he finds Stephen Carter. Too far out, one would suggest. He's 70 metres, but he's got onto a long bomb. He's pulled it to the left. They crowd over the big man and one behind. Goes on the board as Cummings picks himself up. And Matty Primus has a well-earned rest. 8-12, plays 16-14. I guess if there's any positive to come out of this game, this fellow here on screen is one, Darren Buick, playing another game. The fact that going up the midfield, he's now become the designated kicker. It's going to be a hard um, five or six weeks now for Essendon, isn't it? 
most of this season. Pretty lonely old training nights out at uh, Windy Hill because uh, it would take a miracle now for them to have uh, any part of September. And quite frankly, they're not good enough. Gorman. a half forward nothing much happening Hardwick Franco they won their first three the Bombers so they've won three out of their last 13 going in and they're playing like a team with that sort of a record they have been ravaged by injury though haven't they? no they've doubt. got a number of very good players on the sidelines and it's very difficult it's been very difficult for them to get a settled combination and to build any momentum Hurt, Long and Alessio, three players missing from the team that beat Port at Football Park, but uh, it's not just injuries, is it? Lloyd, Short to Simons. Simons, Short, but uh, once oh. again, Bond. That must worry the Essendon uh, football management team the number of times they've kicked the ball straight to the opposition. Paxman's got it. has been good, Paxman. It's had a very solid season. That big play against Brisbane early in the year when uh, it had to be done at half back and he, uh, he did it and they won by less than a kick. Yep, he's done well, hasn't missed a game either. O'Donnell around the body towards the diving Kranzberg. Danaher ignored. Kranzberg looks in towards Lloyd territory at half four. And the young man doesn't let him down. He's a good player, isn't he? He really still looks dangerous every time the ball goes near him. They've had to push him up the ground because they just haven't been able to get enough ball supply to him deep in the forward line. Directly in front, 52 metres from home. A high drop punt is just about going to make the distance. Danaher will be hoping to try and get it out. He's not successful. Gives Wanganeen an opportunity to do a little bit of stretching. Wouldn't he be feeling good, eh? Almost a smile on his face. Not just a win, but a big win against his old side. O'Connor flooded. Dana will have a second attempt. So Chris Danaher breaks his drought and kicks his fourth goal for the season. That goal, just coming from nothing. Just watch this, Chrissy. Just watching the ball very carefully off that, off the hands of Ryan O'Connor. The ball up and just threading it through. And there's no doubt about Chris Danaher. You don't have to worry about him. He always plays with passion, enthusiasm, and heart. And he'll be going right until the final siren. But there's been a lot of worrying signs tonight. There's been a lack of passion in the way that the SM players have attacked this game tonight. Right from the opening bounce, they looked flat. They didn't look like a side that was still trying to play and keep their hopes of playing in the finals alive. And that's exactly how it's eventuated. We see Scotty Cummings right up there on the 50-metre line as the umpire readies himself to bounce the ball. 66 to 110, so the Bombers have uh, outscored Port in the last quarter, but uh, that counts for nothing in the uh, context of this match. O'Donnell, Fraser, back to half or good effort in the front by Danaher. Tim talking about his passion a moment ago. What a great group the Danaher brothers have been for the Bombers over the years. Chris, the last of the four. Paxman wants uh, the boundary line and he's got it we'll see a bit of that tomorrow night won't we <laughs> kicking to touch 66 to 110 9 12 to 16 14. good crowd in the end 33,000 Essendon has uh, magnificent support and port two draw they've got over 50,000 for Collingwood here at this ground and 33 here so the AFL will be happy with that kick by Brewer out on the fall O'Donnell chips it away. Harvey, O'Donnell. Stat sheet might look a bit better at the end of the night now with a couple of those one twos. Good grab by Blumfield. 
Centre half forward. Still a long way out. And decides to go wider to Scott Lucas. And he doesn't let him down. What fizz that was in this game has certainly disappeared. Port home. John Cale, I'm sure, would have liked them to really nail them. Really finish them off. At the end of the night, though, I think he'd be pretty happy with a 40 or 50 point win. Lucas, who's been busy, 21 kicks and 9 marks, so he's tried his heart out for Essendon. He's played as a spare man for most of the night, though, Sandy, with Primus, yeah. the Ruckman, he was matched against after the centre bounces, and Primus has played across half back, and Lucas has gone up the other end of the ground and really played on his own. Danaher gives it out and he does it beautifully to Hardwick and he himself has kicked the goal. Damien Hardwick kicks his first and Essendon putting some respectability onto that scoreboard. That's their tenth and their fourth for the quarter. 10-12 plays 16-14. It was really just another, another soft goal. Intelligent play then by Danaher to get the ball down to Hardwick but the poor players have just relaxed in the last five minutes. They've taken the foot off the accelerator and a number of Essendon players just getting in and around the ball now, getting late possessions. So two goals to Hardwick. I think he said, I said that was his first. Two to Hardwick and uh, both of those in this quarter. Four for the Bombers. At the moment they're outscoring Port in this term. Port have kicked a couple. Ten, twelve, sixteen, fourteen. So the Bombers take a little bit of the uh, lead away from Port, but it's still been a terrific win for the power. Brewer, look away handball. Franco, it's got better as this season's gone on. Kicked the centre half forward. Good grab line field, he's second in this term. Took one a moment ago, centre half forward. And he's got cockatoo columns wide and Buick wide. And he goes to Buick, but he then may be able to go to Fraser. No, that was cut off. Buick back in board, O'Donnell. Getting some kicks across half back in this final quarter. Short to Ola Renshaw. Battled away early, Ola Renshaw. He's had uh, 20 possessions. A couple of mistakes. The one with the uh, when he was run down by Franco. Resulted in a goal. Built it away by Daniels. Buick and Wangan in Cotton. Denham back to Buick. Buick. To centre half forward Lucas. Good effort. Bond was there, Paul getting back, Lucas again getting his hands on it. Port tackle him well, and it'll be a bounce. 10 goals to 16, so the power to win for the first time at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, and for the second time in Victoria this year, the Brownlow medalist looks on, James Hurd, hasn't played since round 10. We're told won't play for the rest of the season. Won't he be hungry at the start of 1997? Eight, I should say. Lucas gets it from Olorenshaw, shrugs a man, but again, they give it up, and Wanganeen, who's taken them on, Harry has a smile. Must be one of the most satisfying matches in Wanganeen's career tonight. Here's Adam Huskus. He's been very good towards Lade. Got one hand to it, but that was all. Then is able to apply the tackle. Away comes Kranzberg, 75 metres from home. He goes for home, but Bond is there on the last line of defence to take the mark. Floats it over the top to Daryl Poole. Port players running everywhere. They bring it out of defence, back towards centre wing, and the mark taken by Steve Carter. Well, I'm sure one of the arguments they would have presented to Wanganeen when they wanted him to stay was to say, look, you're going to go over there to Port Adelaide. They're not going to win a game for a couple of years. <laughs> stay here, just wait till they build a bit of momentum. And then less than 12 months down the track, they've taken the Bombers to the cleaners here at the MCG. Lade's got Cockatoo Collins. Wilson bends it back in towards full forward. Denham had to show courage, and he did. Oh, here's another one. Eva. Finishing it off. Brett Heaver gets his second, and Port get their 17. 17-14 as Jack Cowell looks on. 10-12. There's Wilson. He just continues to work hard for 120 minutes. Denham going back with courage. Unlucky bounce 
off his head or off his hands in the end and that is Brent Heaver's bread and butter Brent Heaver a good under the pack type player good front and square type player and a good finisher too 10 12 17 14 Tim they're all important to Heaver too because he's really sort of playing all the time for his life isn't he? he needs to kick a goal or two every week gave one away to Cummings so he's done his job cotton well played cockatoo Collins in trouble little handball Oh, Carousilla, that was quick to Denham. In fact, too quick. <laughs> Very quick. It looked like uh, one of those famous crow handballs of the first couple of years, didn't it? The crow throw. And Cummings, is it, on the end of it? No, no Brewer. It's been uh, up and down, Brewer. He's had a couple of great matches this year. And a couple that he's been a bit down, but he's been pretty good. I think good he last week, wasn't he, against uh, Buckley? Just watch that, yes, uh, Carousel, just getting the ball off too quickly. They've just redefined his role a bit at uh, Port Power. Good kick, Brewer, he's got it. So John Cahill might get his wish here, Tim. He wanted to win every quarter. They've kicked the last two. They've got their noses in front again in the last. Well, Brewer may have, in fact, found his niche now because he's struggled as a ball-winning midfielder. They played him last week on Buckley. He did very good on Buckley. A bit like Andrew Wills, actually. He's gone from someone who struggled to get kicks at half forward in the end. Well, there's been a lot of players like that in the in the past who have started. Even Gary O'Donnell started as a run with player, then became a player in his own right. And Brewer's just probably going back, learning defence, playing on a player, and he may be a very important player in the latter part of this season for Port. Free kick out of the middle, and it's going to go the way of O'Connor. So the Bombers a chance to finish with something. Bloodfield towards half forward. No mark taken. Hardwick in the thick of things once again. So too was Lloyd. Danner there also. And inside the last minute, a bounce at centre half forward for Essendon. The real problem with the way Essendon are playing their football at the moment is the fact that they'll probably end up with as many or perhaps even more possessions than Port. Yet once again, they haven't nearly been as effective as the opposition in danger of finding themselves in 15th spot at the end of this round of matches Ola Renshaw written into the ground has the football with him Donald Dickey saying you're going nowhere but Porter Johnny Kyle comes out to meet his players a grand effort by Port Power let's join Johnny Kyle now with Matt Campbell thanks Andy John a very good win again tonight yeah it was great Matty um, this is only the second time that some of the players have seen the MCG, so um, it was great. You know, it was, a, it was a tough team we're playing. I know they're down on confidence, but we still had to win them. Uh, great to be back at the MCG under lights. Uh, great experience for the guys as they get used to it. Oh, they'll, they'll, they'll mature mentally a lot. You know, physically they'll have a go, and, and the young hearts will just keep trying and trying. But mentally we learn a lot, so it's great to be back here. Uh, dominated in the, in the tall department tonight. Primus magnificent, and Daryl Paul getting better every quarter he plays. Well, he, he needed that. He wanted to come off, but I just couldn't have his toughness off the ground. And it was important to keep that uh, percentage going. So it was a good win. I'm really pleased for the guys. Fantastic. Good luck next week against. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Oh, geez, that'll be a big one, won't it? Yeah, huge one. Now, Scotty Cummings with Mark Doran Mark. Yeah, Scotty's been congratulated by all his teammates. Is it good to get one up on the old side? Mate, uh, that's probably the best feeling I've ever had, you know, and uh, the boys were terrific tonight. Uh, I just can't believe it. It's fantastic. And personally, seven goals? Yeah, should have kicked a little more. I was pretty uh, disappointed with some of my kicks, but uh, seven in the win, mate, that's just great. Now, respect is something you've, you've had to come to Melbourne and earn, and you've done it tonight in a big way. Well it is and uh, you know, we look forward to coming to Melbourne. I think that's the biggest hurdle because you know, we want to play finals footy and finals are played in Melbourne so uh, you know, we look forward to coming here. We're excited about coming here and we really believe in ourselves now. You've played finals footy. Is this side good enough to play finals football? Good finals football here at the MCG? I actually uh, have been dropped for both of Essendon's finals campaign so but uh, in my opinion mate, I think this side can do anything and uh, on our day then you know, we're a good unit. No wonder you're so happy mate. Well done. Go and enjoy yeah, it. Boys, thanks. thanks Scotty. Thanks, Mark. Great shot there. We see Kevin Chudy going off. A great shot of two Brownlee medalists a moment ago. There they are. James Hurd and Gavin Wanganeen. Nice touch. Wanganeen magnificent tonight. Cummings said, Tim, one of his most satisfying nights. And for the two of them, and for this club, look at the crowd that have come over. Certainly outnumbered, but high in spirit. <laughs> oh, look at them. And the first win ever of the MCG. That's probably the first time we've seen two players on the MCG having a chat about the share market too, Bruce, because both those players, Wangan and Hurd, on a lot of money to play their 
football and I'm sure that they've both got some stocks around the place and they're probably Wang's probably just asking Jimmy if he's been keeping an eye on what's happening on the stock market for him because the gold prices have been plunging in recent times. Well, Dick I know the Dow Jones, eh? <laughs> What do you reckon, Jim? Can they go uh, through to September and play in the finals? I've got no doubt about that now. I've got no doubt about that now. They play with a lot of passion. There are a lot of people's second side court because they have won them over with the way they do play their football. And, look, I thought they had a couple of weaknesses early on, but they seem to have patched those up. I thought centre-half forward may have been a weakness, but Poole is a much better player than I thought he was. And I think if they can keep him fit, they can keep him out there on the ground, and he can continue to work at the rate that he has been working at, then they'll certainly challenge some of the better credentialed sides in the latter part of the season. They're about to go with the song. in the background, former Collingwood, yeah. in Port LA Star. from the Melbourne Cricket Ground, Port Power 18-14, Essendon 10-12.
The power won every quarter over Essendon and in the end they won very easily. 18-14, Cummings getting seven and Wanganeen getting four and Essendon 10 goals 12. Tim Watson, a former champion at Essendon, must be pretty disappointed with the Bombers tonight. Yes, I am, Bruce. It's very difficult to watch your old side play like that. They look mm. dispirited. They look flat right from the word go. And there was no intensity whatsoever in their play. And I think that's the most worrying thing when you do support a side. You do like to think that they're out there playing with some passion. The two former Bombers, we've talked about them a lot tonight. 11 goals between them, Wanganeen and Cummings. Wanganeen seems to have an awareness about him that very few athletes possess in any sport. I mean, he seems to get move his body into space just in time and it works so beautifully doesn't it? Well I think he's our equivalent to Michael Jordan he really is in that class in terms of his athletic ability and if you can afford the luxury of pushing him forward just watch this goal I mean awareness is everything instinct and this one here too like Chris Danaher came at him seized him, sized him up, mm. and Gavin just managing to arch his back, just gets a couple of centimetres, often it's just enough to get away from the tackle, and you see a couple of mates, both former Brownlow medalists there, having a chat together, good friends when they were at Essendon together, and I know that they do chat on the phone from time to time too, and I'm sure Gavin would have been saying to Jimmy that all the best, get your leg right, come back again next year. Well, it was a fantastic game by the captain. We believe he was reported early yes. in the match. but uh, He appeared to have his number taken yeah. for charging Ben Doolan. And Ben Doolan, in fact, not taking any further part in that game. Match stats. Uh, well, you said what's going to be a worrying thing is that the Bombers will probably have as much as the footy as Port Adelaide. They have. They're just not effective with their possessions. It's the style of play they do play, and I think that they're going to have to examine that. And Kevin Shetty is going to have to spend a lot of time over the summer months instructing his boys to play a more direct and effective style of play if they want to be in the top eight in this competition. Taking into account the fact that mm. they have a number of injuries this year too. Let's go down to the port rooms. Uh, Matthew Campbell's with Donald Dickey. Thanks very much, Bruce. With me is one of the stars, I thought. Anyway, uh, Donald, congratulations. Now, we take yourself back to the first game you played here against Collingwood. You must really love the MCG. Yeah, actually, it's a good ground for me, you know, nice and wide and that. And, uh, you know, there's a few empty spaces out there, so it's good to get a, get a good run in the park out there. Port have been criticised sometimes this year not getting off to a good start. So today or tonight was a different story. Yeah, actually, we let them score the first one, but then we scored probably the next three or four. And, and that's what you need uh, when you're playing in the state is to get a good start. And uh, finally, we have. So Last week against Collingwood was a good four-quarter effort. Again tonight, a couple of players went missing. Braden Lyle pulled out before the side. And Brendan Lade spent all the time on the bench. Other players are stepping up, aren't they? Yeah, it's all right. Each week, you know, there's there's always someone that's stepping up and put their hand up, and uh, and we're without uh, Fabian Francis early as well, so you know we're a bit down on, on our men, but uh, everyone played great. It's a good team effort. How did you feel before the game, knowing that really this was one of the away games that you had to win on the road to the finals? Yeah, definitely. You know, if we could win tonight, you know, we really set our you know finals campaign up, and uh, just makes it a little bit easier. You know, we probably only need to win our two home games, and if we win another one or two away, it'll, it'll probably help us as well. How important now is percentage becoming because I, I remember Jack a couple of games ago he said percentage isn't important for us we have to get 12 wins but if you keep winning like this it may become a factor. Yeah that's right you know it was about eight goal win so that's tw that's two weeks in a row we've, we've won by fairly good margins and it's probably put ourselves over the hundred mark now so no, it's really good. All right, mate. Well, thanks for your time. Congratulations once again, personally, on a great game, and good luck next week. Thanks, Matty. Thanks, Donald. Not the first time this year we've seen a Port player not overcome by it. No. Uh, respecting the opposition, but at the same time believing they can win and not being arrogant. No. They've just got this enormous belief, <laughs> haven't they? <laughs> they believe that they belong to be in the finals, and that's because they've been in the final <laughs> series so many times in the past, Bruce. We'll take a break and back with more from the MCG after this. If the house is rocking.
17-14 over Essendon, 10-12 on Friday Night Footy. The 1997 AFL Premiership season. Proudly brought to you by Foster's Light Ice for extreme refreshments. Telstra, making life easier. Qantas, the spirit of Australia. And McDonald's, the official restaurant of the AFL. You look at Port Adelaide, they have jumped up. I know they'll come down a bit over the weekend, but they've got their percentage up to 103, and only a fortnight ago it was 95, so it's now manageable, isn't it? And Essendon continue to lose ground, and now completely out of it. Well, they're right out of the equation now. They did have a faint hope going into this game, but really you can rule them out now of playing any further part in the finals. Primus was great, and so is Cummings doing a radio interview, probably uh, for uh, back home and the west of the weekend. Carlton and North at Optus. Who do you like? I like Williams. Yeah, look, I, I like North Melbourne actually in that game. Hawthorne Fremantle. I like Freo in that game. Sydney Western Bulldogs will be in Sydney for that tomorrow night, the 4.30 game. That will be a war, that one, Sydney. Adelaide Richmond. Going for the home side there. Second half live here in Melbourne. West Coast Geelong. I think Geelong might upset the moment. St Kilda there. Brisbane, a beauty. St Kilda and Collingwood to defeat Melbourne. What about the Bledisloe Cup? 7.30 around Australia. Check your local guides. All Blacks or the Wallabies? I'm going for the Wallabies, Bruce. So am I, and I don't know why. Because I don't know I'm, why either. I've just got a funny <laughs> feeling. Well, it was great tonight if you're buried for Port. Not so good for Essendon. In the end, the power won by 50 points. Good evening. Well, that's the thing about That's what I like about Yeah, that's the thing about The thing about football That's what I like has been a 7 Sports production.